it is JDF. Listen, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I just pushed record, so I'm going to speak from the heart. I think today we're going to talk about being yourself and being you. And the hardest thing to do is to be transparent. I think, for me at least, I was always stuck in this world way back in the days, uh, growing up as a kid, of not saying no or being the yes man. Um, but you know what transparency is all about is getting down to the bottom of the problem. If you have an issue with someone, honestly, the best thing to do is just go and talk to that person, confront that person, not confrontation. There's a difference. Just confront, be transparent and ask them, Hey, you know, instead of all the gossiping and all of this and all of that, is there an issue that we're having or is there a problem? And then you can work it out. So, uh, sometimes I think, People aren't transparent. And I know we all have to wear a mask in life. I know that. I get it. Because you can't say, how your day? how's your day going? You're going to be like, my day's crap. How's your day? I get it. We all have a mask. But at least being transparent and being a man of your word. Those two things, I think, will make you the toughest, biggest, baddest man or woman on the planet. Is because, number one, you can't buy trust. You can't buy your word. If you break it, it's broken. No one's going to believe in you. No one's going to trust you. So that has to be built from the beginning. If you say something, you got to do it. Just don't say it because it's getting you out of a situation. If you say it, then do it. That's your word, right? It's gold. It's priceless. You can't pay for that back. Also, it's not for sale, right? So being a man of your word, and then also just being transparent. You know, sometimes you got to say no. Um, don't just be the yes man. I used to be out there and say, oh, I'll do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. The only problem is I said yes, and I'm not going to let people down. So that's where my issue was back then. So I learned just now to be you. Be you, but also be transparent. Be a man or a woman of your word. If you say something, then do it. Uh, and if you don't, then you need to own up. You need to step up and be responsible. There's no one better that I respect than someone stepping up and saying, you know what? I own that. That was my mistake. I apologize for that. What can I do to make it better? Sometimes we got to own up to our mistakes. And there's a lot of people that don't do it. So that's what I think we're talking about is being a man of your word, being transparent and just, uh, own up on your own BS. You know what I mean? All right. That's all that's on my heart. Have a good day. Not much advice I'd want to give you because it's the pain that drives your success. It's the stumbles that make you get back up. These lessons can't be taught. It's the experience one has to learn. Sometimes people say life isn't fair, but it's all how you look at it. There are lessons I could teach you but you're the only one that must make the choices. Sometimes we'll lose the battle, but you must win the war. Wounds hurt, but now they're battle scars. I had to let you fall because God picked you back up. Life isn't a race, it's a marathon. Your longevity will tell your legacy. Good job, Jay. Fall. Well, it's been a while since I wrote. I'm sure at times everyone has moped. But this ain't me. I don't want to go back to where I was. All I could do is pray and hope, shake it off. But when I do, my mind says, nope. I mean, how do I deal with this? How do I even cope? I don't want to slide, but it is a slippery slope. I'm struggling, I'm grabbing, I slip because I missed the rope. My emotions are overflowing like a waterfall. The words I speak are positive. Well, at least I think they are. Overall, with stress occurring regularly, it's too fast. It's a hand side. Emotions are throwing like a curveball. But how can you even breathe when the air feels like ethanol? I mean, I want to fight back my mind. I want to brawl, but when I punch, I'm on the ground. I mean, I see the takedown. I begin to sprawl, but I miss. All I can do is crawl. Then I disappear, I'm gone. And it's just me. Staring at the ceiling wall. I mean, people can see my pain. You can see it in my eyeball. The sun would shine, but the darkness moves in, becomes a rainfall. I'm all over the place, like a human pinball. 
So I delay and I begin to stall. Please, God, take my hand before I fall. No, these guys are so excited out here. Look, they're excited. Wow. So much love. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> they're the best. JDF, I really miss you, man. You, you were not only an inspiration to me, you were an inspiration to thousands of people around the world. And your legacy is going to live on forever. Um, Jason David Frank was a icon to me. He taught me how to stand up for myself and also yet have a heart. JDF, when I've met him in person, is such a great, great, caring individual. He loves his fans, he cares for his fans. Jason David Frank was that kind of person that he was the friend to talk to when you were down. He wasn't just the Power Ranger on screen. He was a real life superhero. And after that, he just kept going and he inspired so many over the years, including myself. He was just deeply caring and loved by his fans as he should be. And um, he seemed to be like how a real life Power Ranger would be. He was so amazing to his fans. He just never stopped loving his fans. Hey everyone, do it out little Pulaski senior here, and I'm following my hero, Johnny Young Bosch. That's right, JYB. Oh, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Let's see if we can see him. Hey, Johnny, it's me, Fab. <laughs> I gotta go. JDF is coming too. Bye. We gotta hold it all in, but around the corner, we're all we're all balling around the corner, you know. And it's tough. It's uh, it's really hard for me, you know. But if I can make a child happy, and uh, then that that's what matters to me, you know. Here, use this one. Really? Yes, because they're here to hear you talk. They're so impressed. Oh, uh, so impressed. Thank you. So yeah, uh, Kimberly dumped me. <laughs> Recovering center to really you know, try to be a better person and you know just um, walk that walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a Ranger Recovery Program. Jason David Frank meant so much to me in more words than I can describe. I think the word that may have meant so much to me is how inspirational he was. Whenever you feel like you were down or having a bad day, his inspirational messages were always there to comfort you. Jason David Frank never really um, left my heart. I mean, the guy always carried this passion and charisma with him whenever he was on screen. And the reason and what JDF means to me is it means that he's my local hero. He's the reason why I became a cosplayer. Jason David Frank is the greatest idol of my adolescence. Had the opportunity to meet him during his visit to Mexico. I was my source and of inspiration to seek to be better in their everything I do. I decided to write um, Combat a Grid, and he told me to never stop, keep going. You know, um, outside of everything, he was a very humble person, and he was there for his fans, and he was a hero. He was my hero. And he reflected a lot of what I want to be in in my own life. Um, Tommy Oliver is forever a hero. Jason David Frank will, will always be one of my heroes, and I'm sure so many people can say the same thing that I'm saying right now, which is that my heart is forever green. Hashtag forever green. Forever green. Forever green. Forever green. See you later. Take care. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You forgot something. You forgot something. Bye.
get your money up, not your Father, whoop, friend, whoop, 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 whoop. sorry about that. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, let's go. Oh, man, 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 man. Oh, it is going to be a great show. It's going to be a great one. Oh, snap. Night Runner. So oh, she's offered salute to Night Runner on Twitch. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> what are you cooking, Henry? I know I've been I've I've been forgetful in activating the Twitch stream when I've been doing the YouTube thing. It happened maybe once or twice at this point. But we got everyone from the Resilient Army up in here and salute to no, Night Reiner. Salute to you and salute to my man Dust. I, I saw you out there, Dust. I saw you out there, Dust. He came out the top and was like, I got money. So uh, salute to uh, Night Rider for the five months, uh, three months in a row now. Jesus, man. God, salute. God, no. But anyway, guys, today we do have a great show in store. We do got the, the CEO of FCC or Fedville Comic Con in the back, just chilling, just waiting, just 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 standing by. <laughs> Which I could not be more appreciative of. I mean, I was nervous at first, guys. I'm like, hey, the sound check is at seven. I, I, I send off the, the email. And I'm just sitting here waiting. I'm like, oh, snap. I'm waiting, 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 waiting. And, you know, when you got like a big guest like this, you waiting at the computer. You, you, I'm not doing nothing else. I think I went and brushed my teeth and I, and I ran back down. And I'm just like, hmm, okay, wait, wait, wait. Around 730, I heard that, that beep. He came through. Sound test went great. It's not his first rodeo. So we're going we gonna, uh, we to get into some questions with him. Um, and then we have more, more stuff, more stuff. But before we bring him up, right? Let me acknowledge the earlier contributors, Dust Productions, for sponsoring the show. I saw the memberships. I saw the super chat. I saw my man Dust Resilient Army for he said for life. Hold up for. <laughs> for, life, for life. I appreciate that, man. And uh, I look. I, I'm not gonna lie, man. His support has increased the show's production tremendously, and all you guys support everyone who's liked the stream, who sent the super chat, cash app, all that good stuff. I want to sincerely say thank you, but I do have a small correction to make from yesterday's show. If you were at the last 30 minutes, right? When I was, when I was, <laughs> when I was, I was like, <laughs> guys, <laughs> this divorce is killing me <laughs> and I'm going through so much <laughs> and I was doing all that stuff and talking about my mom and my mom hit me up, right? She hit me up today. She was like, boy. I did not beat the Grim Reaper three times. I'm like, what, what are you talking? I thought you had three strokes. She said, no, I have four. I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so shout out to my mom and grandma, baby watching the stream, you know, ninja watching. Cause you know, I got the haters, the haters out there be, <laughs> be, be on me or whatever. And salute to goddess diva P PVP's hot garbage. Here we go. Five months on Twitch, six months on YouTube. Salute to you. Uh, double dipping. You know, that's probably, this is probably one of the best DJs this side of Mississippi. Not only does she game, but she also DJs. You know, like, I mean, knowing my audience, don't I? So everyone, if you're not on Henry Court, go on Henry Court. But we do have... We do have some breaking news. I know, right? You like, Henry, we cannot take any more breaking news. We cannot. Well, Fanwort finally acknowledged what happened. They finally was like, all right, okay, guys, you got us. We'll acknowledge it. We'll, we'll, we'll say, you know, something happened. I mean, here, here's the post, but hold on. We got to do this right, right? You like Henry, we, we got to do this right. I know you be having the inside scoop. I know you be having the scoop. Yeah, I do. So what happened with fan work? ASJ, we saw his post. It was weak. It was, it was not what it, what it needed to be. But someone, you know, Pete, someone who wants to remain anonymous, obviously, uh, was like, hey, you can, you can use this stuff or whatever. Uh, hey, may we all, you know, this is from inside of FanWord. This is uh, the FanWord camp. P 
people don't know this, but I have people all over who send me information who, all, you know, some like to remain private. You know, they don't want they don't want to be out here all like that. Certain you know, things have to be kept private. Uh, some people don't even want me investigating. You shouldn't be investigating too much. But, you know, here we are. This is what I do. Former investigator turned content creator. You know, the goal is to give you guys one of a kind content, you know, that you're not going to find anywhere else because, you know, people want to kind of sweep this under the rug. So what they say, hey, may we all respect for each other. I may be stepping away from fan work due to recent statements from certain unkind person, which is, you know, uh, Zach Taylor McGinnis and him being associated with Austin. I wish you all well. I wish you all well. And salute to Dust. He just cranking them out, cranking out the memberships. We had like, what, 15, 15 memberships. Shout out to Dust sponsoring. Grab that membership. This is someone from on the inside. They're like, hey, I'm stepping away. Why? I don't like what's going on. Hey, give it time. I'm guessing you're talking about what happened yesterday. You can't judge everyone by their job. Mm, I don't know about that. Sometimes you don't like people you work with. You do it because it's a paycheck. Ooh, ooh, you know, some people have standards, right? We don't just do anything for a paycheck. We just don't do that, right? Well, you know, I'm not going to say names because we got a special guest coming up. <laughs> But, you know, some people stay on standards. You know, I'm trying to keep the, the stream as, you know, PG as possible. Who knows what will happen anyway? Stay positive and just hope for the best. Guys, hope is not a strategy. I don't know if it, anyone ever told you that, but hope is not a strategy. So what does it say? Yeah, what said was completely uncalled for. I hope Austin makes a statement and doesn't be complicit. Well, <laughs> complicit. <laughs> In this individual's actions, not only is he complicit, he's supporting this guy still. But, you know, that's a topic for another day. I honestly really hope Austin distanced himself from this person. What happened was absolutely inexcusable. Right. And they're talking about this post right here, which, you know, I, we've all seen. No need to go in it. Uh, at, we, we've covered it at Ignazium. Right. So what happened? This person said, hey, look. Hey. David, the owner of FanWord, got a call from Austin, you know, a ASJ, bad boys, bad boys. giving him the heads up about a post from Zachary. So he knew about the post day of, which would, you know, be fair. It is uh, ASJ's, you know, right hand, right hand man, if you will. Um, now, I know David is just trying to run a business, so I get why he would want to stay neutral. But I really did not like the way he handled it. A few of us voiced some opinions in the admin group chat when David told us this news and David immediately messaged all of us to remove any and all of our opinions from the matter. So, hey, I don't want you guys to have an opinion, you know, kind of like a news broadcaster. Hey, you can't you can't be for it or against it either way. He then told us that we were to remain completely neutral on the matter and quietly delete any and all posts that mention Zachary. See, this is this is how you kind of control the narrative. When you don't want certain news out there, you stop the people from spreading. It is called censorship. We are, we're all familiar with it, right? But at the same time, not only was he deleting these things, but people who oppress the issue, you get blocked, which is potential customers. So we, we have this one. Hey, look, I, I had to block out personal parts because we don't want, you know, this person's identity to uh, be known. But you can at least say that, you know, for sure that they are sweeping this under the rug and don't plan on making a statement against Zach, which this this is a truthful, yeah, statement. A truthful statement. They have not made one statement against Zach, and you can probably argue that they support Zach. The plan is just to focus on being positive and any other conversations don't belong, so you will get banned. They like Jesus, man. They going, they going to rock. <laughs> oh, I can't play the rock sound bite, but they're going to town. So finally, and guys, if you've been following the channel, you know this guy David reached out to me before regarding some fair use stuff. This is why I never use fan words uh, content anymore. Um, but I'm posting this into the group because Austin and I. Austin and I, I thought it was three people in the group, but you know, I mean, four actually, you got the owner, you got Walter and you got some other guy, I think the guy who played Peter Pan. So two people making, which looks to be a unilateral decision. I don't know the, the percentage of ownership. Um, 
I'm not sure what Walter's stance is. I don't know if he's still a part of FanWare. I saw him posting stuff, so I, I can only assume that he is. Um, but what does he say? I'm posting this because, you know, Austin, I think that it should be here. People make mistakes. God, damn, that was a hell of a mistake, guys. You, that, that's not a mistake. Retweeting something in the heat of a moment, you know, a quick button press mistake. Uh, you know, leaving the door unlocked on your way out the house mistake. Those are mistakes. This this post right here, this is premeditated. That's not a mistake. You know how long this had you had to type this up? How long do you think it had to type this up? So, not going to read it, but this is not a mistake. If you think it's a mistake, you're just coping. You're trying to cope with the fact that, you know, it's out there. You know, which, you know, it was a huge one, which he is taking responsibility for. I mean, like, how? How is he taking responsibility for? With the, with the fake apology? Perhaps, maybe. I mean, look, guys. Accountability and responsibility is one of those subjective things. What's accountability to me may not be accountability to you. You know, this, it's one of those words. I know, I think by and large, we can all agree that maybe accountability and responsibility has not been taken considering uh, in his apology, he said he may do it again. So uh, there's that. Commenting will not be turned on on this post because we don't, we don't want to hear your, your true thoughts about it. Um, and they don't even acknowledge the road Zach made. So if it, it is what it is. No. So, Let's keep going. May the power protect you. Love always. I, I mean, how do you guys feel about it? I'm, I'm here. Look, I have my own opinion, but I hope you guys still form your own. That's all I want is you to form your own opinions. Own opinions. I'll give you mine. You choose to feel how you feel. When people start seeing censoring, I agree with Mickey. It feels like they're guilty. Hey, pfft, hey, that. that that's Mickey and Francis opinion. But, you know, censorship is never good. Never looks good as a as a business owner. But, you know, at the same time, hey, you're, you're trying to, I don't know, mitigate this, the situation to some extent. What do, what do you guys think? Is this fair foul? Hey, I mean, they just posted it now. We have what, nine days after the original post. And it's one of those reactionary posts where. If it wasn't no backlash, they never would have posted this. Now, why would they? Well, what's happened is everyone is asking about Zachary. Hey, are you still cool with Zach? Are you still friends with Zach? Is he still your booking agent? Hey, he got banned at these different places. What's the role Zach plays in your life? And you would not get a straight, uh, a straight answer. But, you know, some people, look, look, here we go. Hey, what David Blair said is foul. Hey, look, he, he, he got to think about money. Hey, we trying to run a business. What's good for business? I don't know. I mean, what's a what's a better question? Uh, you know, ASJ does have a pending legal battle with the United States government. So I don't know how they're going to spin that if it doesn't go uh, ASJ or Jason Lawrence Skyger's way. We don't know. Just wanted to make you guys aware. Spreading information, not necessarily negativity, but, you know, that's that's the spin. I'm spreading negativity. So if I'm spreading negativity... If I'm spreading negativity, what? What is, what is, you know, we talked about this kind of yesterday. You guys remember this? This post? This response that was six days ago, likely when uh, the CEO got word of the post? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe the CEO took some time. We're going to find out. We're going to ask, hey, we're going to get into all of this, but this is Fedville Comic Con's page. For those who may be new, let me give you a reminder what was said in response to the to the post. And I told you this was the post I, I love the most. I was like, hey, this is this is how you kind of handle it, right? Hey, if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. Yeah, pretty true. Pretty true. Alexander Hamilton to Wayne and the Hicks from uh, Letter Kenny. It's so many variations out there. Hey, what it means to FCC is that we represent our fans. We strive to be an example to other shows on how we treat people. Our fans, our guests, our vendors and artists. Without going into great detail, we are in the position that the comments made recently by Zach McGinnis of Galactic Productions calling him out and the company he represents or he owns 
on social media were not only evil and, ab and abhorrent, but a hint at the ethic of an individual that we have no desire to do business with. OK, notice they didn't say, hey, this was a huge mistake. You see the difference? Hey, this was evil. This was abhorrent. This means that we will not bring in guests represented by his agency, even if those guests are represented additionally by other agencies, you know, third party. Like, hey, what if Henry books some people from there? They, they like, uh, nope, no. Uh, we draw the line way before the intolerance and ignorance displayed in the matter in question. Note that while his client list contains past guests of our show, they were not booked through Galactic Productions. We encourage celebrities working with Galactic Productions to seek other representation. And if you're a booking agent right now, hey, you might be wanting to call them up like, hey, uh, what, you aware of this that's going on? You aware you can't go to uh, Fedville Comic Con? Hey, I'm just late. I'm just the messenger. But if you want to get into Fedville Comic Con, hey, we can we can set that up for you. We can set that up for you. Um, but, you know, contracts are contracts and sometimes contracts can be binding. And uh, we're going to ask, you know, the CEO about, you know, did he receive any backlash for such a a strong swift stance? You know, this, you know, people want to know, like, hey, did pe did you get any pushback? Did you get any support? I see 221 likes. I don't see any angry things or any up. Oh, I didn't I didn't like it. Jesus, I'm over here. I didn't read it like five, five times, but let me let me show some more support. Um, we're going to get into all of that. So without further ado, guys, are y'all, are y'all ready? <laughs> like this is the earliest I ever brought for the main event, but you know, this guy is very busy and we don't want to take up, you know, too much of his time. Let me see if he's still in the background. Yeah, he, he is ready. Let me, let me get ready guys. Um, that intro takes time. Intro takes time. Give me a second. And we're going to go through a couple questions. Uh, it's not going to be too long. It's not going to be too short, per se. Let me get my questions up. You're like, you got questions? You prepped? I'm like, this, this would be one of the only times that I'm actually prepped. <laughs> You're like, oh, you prepped? Like, yeah. I had to prep, you know, for an, an important Guess you want to be prepped. You know, you don't want to waste their time or your own. So without further ado, Mr. Keith Gibbs, welcome to the stream. Welcome. Thank you, Andy, for having me. Uh, let me let, let's get this going right off the rip. First and foremost, thank you for. One, speaking up about the issue, because, you know, other people may have not have. But more importantly, thank for thank you for coming forward to speak publicly about it, whereas some people are taking like a silent a silent stance. So from everyone, well, well some some may know and and some may not that, um, especially this past uh, spring, Fayetteville Comic Con made a great effort to partner with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention to raise awareness as well as as both you know mourn and and celebrate uh jason david frank's life uh jdf as as we all know here and i'm sure many of you know was a true fans person i mean he was the last man standing he would make sure that you got your signature he would you know spot you in the crowd and pull you up and make sure you had that experience that wasn't just walking by a table and getting something scribbled on um so with a lot of his uh you know outlook on life and and knowing that he even with those he had his struggles uh we committed to to seeing that those same mental health issues those same questions are in our own groups in our in our fans that come to our shows and we wanted to to make that a a celebration of his life but also a very heavy awareness around, um, you know, what you can do if you start to drift into thoughts of, of self-harm. And so when the statement came out on the anniversary of, of Jason's uh, taking his own life, um, a lot of people hit me up with it immediately. Okay. Right? Knowing that we had just, 
you know, we were the first show to do something together. We had, we had Rangers from every season he participated in, including legend of the white dragon upcoming project. Uh, we did, um, forever green tributes to him. We raised money for the American foundation for suicide prevention. We allowed his, his daughter and wife to, to be surrounded by love at a time when they needed that. And so just from a personal, you know, disgust that somebody would say something like that, uh, you know, hit me hard, but that's the illogical part of it. Mm -hmm. The logical part of it is that the guy is a representative, a booking agent for talent, right? Mm -hmm. And if people don't know what that is, it's just somebody who goes, makes contact with, with shows and comic book stores or, you know, what used to be uh, car lot openings <laughs> things <laughs> back to Burt Ward and, and uh, Adam West did it as Batman and Robin, but then to find a celebrity appearance who would come, who will come into the show. And a lot of times that's not somebody who's even in the business. It's just, it's just a buddy. It's just an entourage. It's, you know, it's E or turtle or, you know, from entourage being the guy that's walking around the Vinny getting things signed. Um, but it breeds a person and not all are the same, but it definitely breeds a person that starts to think of themselves as more than others because they have access to celebrity. And that's a, that's a, sickness in this convention circuit it really is and and it's a, and it's a u.s sickness i mean it's not you go to a you know australia place i mean you nobody bothers the celebrities they're just they work just like everybody else works they work at their job but you can be walking down the street and there's the guy from you know ncis sydney or something <laughs> okay okay and, and it's but it's just it's just not that big of a deal right it's this the propagation of that hero worship and for people like jdf man you hear thousands of stories about how he helped somebody at a time in their life just by being on a certain day by being part of a show that talked about teenage issues and trends and or just all the other uh, special things he did. He gave talks. So, you know, you, A, you don't act, you know, you act right or your grandma makes you go get a switch. Oh, right? gosh. I, mean, oh, I, don't, gosh. I, don't, I don't want grandma going to get my switch or me going to get a switch for grandma. But, you know, you either act right or you don't act. And the reason we took a, a, a firm stance is uh, this is not the first agent or talent that we've heard of or, or witnessed or, or directly seen, you know, misbehave. You know, we've had agents that have come to our shows to rep somebody who get drunk and belligerent to my hotel staff. And I have to, and I kick them to the, kick them to the curb. You know, uh, the, the problem. And I think that I could see, and I'm not going to play devil's advocate for, for Zach, um, I would encourage somebody close to him to to really get close to him to determine if there's some larger mental issues that need to be addressed. But whatever broke him, broke him, right? And we can't, and when damage is done, you can't forgive. You can't excuse. You can forgive. You can't excuse, right? Hundred percent. You, you you can't put somebody you know who's good in a place that they could just do it again. And when you find out all these things about our behavioral, um, as a con runner, the number one, and you know, I'm I'm a show runner with my family. My wife and my two daughters help out. You know, we have a very very tight volunteer group. Uh, very great friends that work together. Is that you know, you don't come into our house and talk bad about us. And so the dynamics of, of promoters, fans, 
guests, agents, artists, and vendors uh, is a little screwed up. And I think it promotes some of this hero type activity, worship activity that is really detrimental to the convention platform. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it and I think everyone has seen it. Uh, speaking of Zach, I, I didn't want to touch on Zach right away, but hey, we're, we're here. Has he reached out to you to try to regain your your trust or your business? No, or- no. And, and you know, the, the point that you talked about earlier and, we, and talked about yesterday as well, which people really need to understand is part of the problem is the talent themselves. You know, you have Power Rangers guests, may have done a couple seasons, may just a thing. They realize that they can make money on the convention circuit. So they want to get into as many conventions as possible. So they'll work with eight, nine different bookers. Right. And so I get somebody presented to me by three different groups. Oh, well, I'll bring in, you know, Walter Jones or I'm bringing him in. Or if you bring him in, you have to bring him in. And all of those non non being exclusive with somebody makes it extremely chaotic to the point that people uh, who are in those positions will do anything to get their scratch, right? So they'll go above and beyond. They'll, they'll start, you know, buying dinners or thing or, you know, buying gifts for the kids and stuff. When, to be absolutely honest, what you do is you make sure pictures get printed. You make sure the guy's got pens. You give him the schedule. You handle some money. You go home. It's far from being a complicated thing. And for a con runner, it's so irritating because they're basically in the way. Right? Yeah. They're, they're bringing their attitude and their point of view into my house and acting in a certain way that they think best benefits their client instead of acting in a way that best benefits my fans. So, or, you know, being rude or, or rushing people through lines or not letting the little kid talk for a couple minutes, because once you put that agent on there, there needs to be more money made. Oh, hundred percent. And that's, And that is a little bit of the biggest problem because what that means is that every signature an autograph or, or special item or fan experience is just going to get more and more expensive. And so the fan can't get what they want or they have to stand in huge lines. Like if you go to galaxy cons or something where, you know, the guests are only there for a couple hours at a time. So now you have three, three, 400 people in line and when you get there, you're spending a hundred bucks. And with when they do guarantees like that, that's the only way to make those guarantees. Fayetteville says, you know, my show, we don't do guarantees. Oh, wow. I, I you know, because it's not fair to the promoter, because that means that the guest has to be willing to sell their product at a price point that works in that marketplace. But most guests say, oh, I, I get $80 a signature. I'm like, well, that's great in, in Raleigh or, or <laughs> Louis, Louisville. In Fayetteville, I need that 80 to become 6250 right? Because you can gauge it against the cost of living, uh, a cost of goods sold. You know, a, a, a 16-ounce bottle of Pepsi in Raleigh costs $1.99. In Fayetteville, it costs $1.39. Why? Because they could sell it at a dollar thirty nine in Fayetteville and not a dollar ninety nine. So that's why you know you have to really try to work with people that understand that my job is to get the doors open and get a good marketplace in there of of anime vendors and comic books and toys and horror as up. Get some good quality guests in there, but the guests themselves. They need to be able, they need to hustle, right? They need to make their money. If they don't make it, I gave them the opportunity. But that idea that, you know, celebrity says, oh, I'm only going to come if I'm guaranteed to make 10 grand. We're just starting to say, well, sorry. You know, would have loved to have you. 
You wow. might make you might make seven. You might make ten if you work it. If you have a if you have a new pitcher or a good experience or you you walk around the show. But you know, it's not my job to make you money. And that was one of the the big things. Because a lot of a lot of fans don't recognize that promoters of mid, medium sized shows, right? We all know there's there's Comic Cons like New York City Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con. That is Walt Disney World, Walt Disney Land, right? <laughs> yeah. You're going to pay a lot. You're going to wait a lot. And it's magic in there, right? You're going to see all those characters that you love. All the big guys are going to be there. You're going to be able to take a little autograph book around, you know, autograph. But you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars for parking, a couple hundred dollars for a place to stay, a couple hundred dollars for the ticket. But you'll get your experience, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's those those cons like uh, you know Baltimore or Fan Expos or C two E two that are like the Six Flags, you know, or Universal Studios. They're bigger but not as big. They still got a lot going on. They're still expensive, but they're fun, right? And then you got the ones that are you know more read like the galaxy cons that are like the bush gardens numbers and then you have shows everywhere like mine which is like the state fair right you know you're going to have fun you're not going to have to spend a lot of money but you also know that you're not going to be getting you know shatner yeah or mike tyson <laughs> i was looking at some of his prices i was like jesus <laughs> I mean, we may get Buster Douglas. I've had Buster Douglas. Buster <laughs> okay. Douglas is great. You play Buster Douglas knockout on the Sega with him, and you beat him every time because his thumbs are so big, man. He can't, <laughs> he can't hit, but he, but he, but he has a good time with it. But you know, fans need to look beyond guests to determine the quality of a show. And if they do that, what that is going to force agents and things to do is to really work to with shows for their guests to come to provide better experience, not just signature. Oh, you know, to have I, unique art pieces, to have, you know, meet and greets instead of just lines, things that add value to, you know, I mean, you get a, get a, you know, a Benjamin, man, you, you want to, you want to, to get every dollar out of that hundred dollar bill, right? You want to so, so you want to walk away with a cool print, a, a, a photo, an autograph, a couple minutes of talking, maybe maybe an exclusive sticker that's just there free of charge, you know, things like that that make it worth it. And it's the agents that could really help shows by helping us set up their guests for success. Instead of just saying, well, he needs a first class plane ticket. I need a plane ticket because I'm coming with him. No, we can't stay in the same room. He likes to have his own room. So you're going to have to get a room for me and him. And then you're going to have to give us per diem money. And then you're going to have to give us the you know a, a appearance fee or guarantee. And all that just destroys how fun a show can be. Wow. I, I agree with you. I've, I've been to a con and I paid my money for my selfie it lasted less than 30 seconds, not much conversation and a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. So um, is there any acts that you, that you were looking forward to book in this year that may have fell through just for a scheduling issue, not necessarily a guarantee issue? Uh, we will have acts that I won't be able to come to grips with because we're the only show of my size or larger that has a zero guarantee policy. So it's hard for people to wrap their head around that because they're used to going somewhere and getting five grand uh. for, for no reason. I mean, <laughs> they could, they could sign one autograph. They would still make five grand. Uh, that, that, that's not fair to the promoter. Yeah. yeah. At all. So I started with, well, I'll give you a guarantee, but then anything over that guarantee goes back to pay for the hotel room and the flight. And then if you pass that, then it comes back to both of us 50-50. And they get confused about that. Uh, there should be a certification for talent coming to cons, which is just personal finance 101. You know, how to make change, how to run a, how to run a square reader. Uh, you know, but 
it's tough changing something that is successful in so many other places that but it's successful because it's making money and all those things i know you alluded to and you talked about oh, zach is that people won't change because it's making them money this is true where i i'm on the side of well we will have to change because i don't want to make money that way now speaking of that do you think that, you know, con owners and promoters will eventually ignore these issues and have um, talent on his roster at their con? I don't want to name names, but do you think they'll eventually go back to booking with uh, Galactic oh, Productions? Abs- absolutely, because there are people out there that are in this first and foremost as a business, right? And the only way that that business could be hurt is for fans to, you know, rise up and not go. And that's hard to think that a, a show like Louisville or someplace is, or Nashville would be so boycotted that people wouldn't go because you have to, you have to get into that point where you have to inform five, six, seven, 8,000 people of what's why you shouldn't go to that show if they book this. So there are more guests out there than you could ever imagine. I mean, there's a hundred power Rangers if you wanted them, (laughs) you know, I'm, I'm I'm doing a show coming up in the spring. uh, We're focusing kind of on the old GI Joe real American hero. Now, you know, knowing it's half the battle may be a fun, Topic because they got cool toys, cool cool videos, cool cartoons, cool movies, uh, new stuff happening in their franchise, and we're on a military base. But um, you can always find guests, and if you find guests that are interactive, that tell good stories, that participate in the show, people are going to want to meet them. Um. You always get this, well, I'm not going to Fayetteville because I don't see anybody on the guest list that they like. Well, okay, but that's your, you're there. You've just said that your reason to go to a show is to meet guests. So if that's your reason, Galaxy Con's an hour and a half up the road in Raleigh. You know, Heroes Con is three hours over in Charlotte. New York City Comic Con is, you know, a train ride up the coast. All right. If that's what you want, that's what you want. So if I understand you correctly, um, what you're saying is uh, FCC sells an experience because we don't offer a guarantee and all of our talent is going to work for your business and they're going to work to keep you coming. So it may not be the biggest act per se, like, you know, William Shatner, but the next best thing, you're going to come out and you're going to have a great time at a reasonable price. Yeah. And we try and we do. We try to, you know, we have a large uh, anime uh, fan, so we always make sure that we have some anime guests that they do well. We have a good Power Rangers solid relationship, so we always have Power Rangers. We have a great uh, Pokemon uh, Go, you know, group in Fayetteville that loves Pokemon. So we always team up with them uh, to come over for one of the days, and we make sure that we have some Pokemon voice actors, and we have you know car, you know, special cards and and art and things to make it part of the you know, the, the landscape of our city so that it's a known thing twice a year. People can plan and they do, they plan for it as soon as they leave of what their cosplay is going to be for the next show, or they meet up with new people. And now they're going to do a different idol fest performance or, or something. It's the guest piece that is the biggest risk, the biggest cost, and sometimes the biggest hassle for the show itself. You know, you're bringing in people from all over the country. They have their own jobs. They're back to work. Screen Actors Guild strike is is done. You have to balance all that, you know, transportation, getting them there and then getting fans in front of them. And that, you know, it's a complicated formula to work. I'm happy you mentioned that because that was one of my questions. Like what was the the toughest thing about, uh, setting up cons, but how did you transition into becoming the CEO 
of FCC because it didn't start with you. I believe it was two other people. Is that correct? Uh, the the con was founded by Michael and Pam Chaudhary in 2015 as a one day show. Mm -hmm. uh, they met me in 2016 where I was volunteering at a North Carolina Comic Con and I came down to help them. And then when Mike fell uh, a little ill and had some health problems, I took over the show. Oh, wow. Just stepped in. Yeah. Um, fans want to know, will you have a line at FCC if they want to meet you? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> when, you wanna, <laughs> when you want to. When you want to meet me, you you just have to stop. You have to get in front of me because I'm usually, you know, I'm six foot eight, you know, 270. I'm cutting through the line like a, you know, like a tight end a lot of time or riding the scooter around, you know, checking on things. But, you know, our, our myself, our staff, we are fully accessible. Uh, we have one of the best volunteer coordinators uh, in the state. She does it for us. She does it for Carolina fear fest. She does it for NC comic con. So we've got to, we've really tried to invest in getting good, solid volunteer support, which means that, you know, problems are solved or problems just don't even come up. Um, I've often thought about having a print made of just some electrical wires across the sky. And I want to say that I was a stunt double for the Vanisher in Deadpool <laughs> 2. And when when the Vanisher hits the, the electrical wires and all of a sudden he's Brad Pitt, right? <laughs> yeah, you for a Brad, split no, second. <laughs> yeah. I was the I was the stunt double for that. So anytime you don't see Brad, it's me. Oh. <laughs> all right. And I'll sign and I'll sign stuff. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, how did you get into cons? You know, uh, you mentioned uh, Batman and Robin going to car dealerships way back in the day. Growing up, what was the quintessential show that got you into the fandom? So I, I started through comic books with G.I. Joe off the spinner rack at the smoke shop on North Avenue in Owego, New York. OK, I bought that comic every month. Uh, when I went off to college, I had it subscribed and it got mailed to me. Um, you know, I was 10, 11 when the cartoon came out. Um, and in that time I was also playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and reading a lot of fantasy, mostly Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Terry Brooks, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin. And my grandmother lived in Baltimore and we would go down and visit her every summer. And there was a small sci-fi fantasy convention down there every year where I would find really cool Tolkien books, like mm -hmm. other editions of Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, but also other works by Tolkien and atlases and maps. So that got me, you know, kind of knowledgeable that there's these clubs and, you know, fan things out there. Um then playing some early Atari video games, you found out that hey, you could go. There's a there's a pitfall tournament in Syracuse with you know 500 people coming to play pitfall, and you kind of got some of that. But when I went to college and entered the Air Force, you know, comic books were a big part of my life. You know, you it's something to do in the barracks. And uh, when I moved to North Carolina, I peeked into a little teeny comic book show which was just a small ballroom in a hotel mostly just comic book dealers went to the next one of those and then when a uh bigger one came around i, I went over to just both mostly just like go through long boxes and look for cool toys but then when my daughters were born and wanted to start coming with me they started cosplaying so now now we're there all day Right. So okay. now there's a reason to be there all day. And so I started volunteering at shows because they would give me free tickets for my kids if I just worked. And I mean, I'm like I said, I was just spending an hour or two anyways, just going through lawn boxes. I might as well go help with lines or, you know, panels and screenings, you know. I've always been able to use my voice to be like that. Everybody, please move to the, <laughs> yeah, I mean, of the uh, <laughs> aisle, you know, make room for everybody. Miss, you'll be out here in about 20 minutes. We're going to be quiet. Make sure your cell phones are turned off. Go, go Power Rangers or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, with you being 6'8", you're going to command attention. People are yeah. not giving you too much All stuff. Right. Yeah. 
But but I've always been one of those ones to just jump in anyways. And, and advice to any of your audience here, if you want to be, if you want great experience at shows, volunteer at shows. You, you know, you get those experiences of meeting people back in the green room or sitting at somebody's table with them when, when they take a break. And then you come back and you get a nice five minutes with Richard Dreyfus or Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime or something you know, all these great experiences I've had just because you're willing to help out. Who was your, your, the best experience you've ever had with, you know, with, a, with a talent or something that has blown your mind. Like, Oh, you know, uh, um, maybe the Optimus prime voice, like do the voice, do the voice, you know, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I have been, I've been very lucky to have a lot of, you know, even, you know, back backstage experience with people. Cause you know, you're driving around, we're going to dinners or stuff. Um, I really enjoyed spending time with Larry Hama, the original creator of of uh, GI Joe. Um, Peter Mayhew was a was a huge, great, great meeting at a Portland Wizard World Portland um, when I was working out there. Um, have it have the picture he signed on the wall, but you know him being somebody bigger than me and. Uh, <laughs> And but his his wife was just so kind and nice and just you know had just great conversations. Uh, Rosario Dawson, I've met her a couple times and she got, and she remembered me and that was super sweet. Um, Jay, uh, Jason Muse and Kevin Smith, pretty awesome. Okay, um, but but nobody that's been you know Billy D. I think maybe one of my best experiences was Billy D. Williams in Chicago, because uh, I wore my NCIS hat and told them, you know, my last name's Gibbs and my brother's name is Jethro, <laughs> and this is before any of this, and that uh, I really enjoyed his character on it. And he wanted to talk to him, and he asked me about my dad, and so Billy D. took like five minutes talking to me while this line's going on. Okay, Billy D. But <clears throat> now you were watching the stream yesterday. Yeah, and you, you mentioned Peter Mayhew. Hmm. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what Zach said. I don't know if you're familiar with Zach said about Peter Mayhew. Yeah, yeah uh, which is another something you don't. I can't. I can't even think things like that about people, let alone say something like "I wish upon him a long, painful death." Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, Peter was the nicest guy in the world. Uh, I didn't know him well, but I, I'm a good judge of character. Uh, but I definitely enjoy a lot of the stuff that he did after in terms of charities and, and appearances. Um, and, you know, felt close to him because, you know, same, same issue with knees and wrists. Uh, and, yeah. When you start getting a certain height, you know, everything breaks down a little faster. Um, Jesus, man, this has been like a phenomenal interview. Um, what do your daughters cosplay as? You say, hey, they cosplay. What so do they, they typically dress your money up, up not your Sorry. They're they're uh they lean into with their groups a lot of the uh idol groups, um, Love Live, uh, or they cosplay Dang and Rampa for a while. Both of them still have some classic Disney uh, characters. They do uh, Merida, you know, from Brave, especially um, uh, some Studio Ghibli. My youngest really enjoys cosplaying Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, but they still have some older ones. I mean, their first ones were Bulbasaur and Oshawott from Pokemon. <laughs> oh, Pokemon. Um, oh, my goodness. But they've done, you know, a little bit of everything. Okay. As well as some original characters, original stuff, but there uh, we have a really good cosplay community in in Central North Carolina. A lot of opportunities. Now, do you dress up yourself? Do you have uh, any costumes? I do, I, and I have. I did a, uh, a pretty good Black Bolt uh, from the Inhumans, which, uh, as you know, he doesn't speak. If he was to speak, it would blow the world apart. So I, <laughs> I wore it specifically so I didn't have to talk to people there. Uh, I'd stay in costume. Um, 
I did a night. I had a, one of my guys designs by Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio Coleman does some really cool uh, foam work, and he did a Moon Knight for me that I did Mr. Knight and Moon Knight. Um, but the one I most recently did is he made uh, helped me put together the pumpkin wrapper from Pump. season from season <laughs> one of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, you pumpkin wrapper from season one. Yep, he's the character where a bunch of the putties come up after him, and yep, Got there him. he is right there. Got him. <laughs> wow! Yep. Wow! All right, last personal question. You said you played Atari. Are you partaking in any of the games that are out now? Like any game and system? Maybe you play with your daughters. Yep. So I'm a, I'm a little behind, but I have in in our alcove here, uh, uh, Atari 2600 and television, ColecoVision, uh, Nintendo NES, Nintendo 64, uh, Sega Genesis, Sega Dreamcast. Uh, oh, he's a gamer. <laughs> uh, Xbox One, Two, Three, Four, PlayStation One, Two, Three, Four uh a couple other variants uh i just finished playing the scott pilgrim versus the world on ps4 i got that really cool uh commemorative box set that had the drumsticks and stuff in it but right now i'm playing uh dragon's lair on ps4 which is a recreation of a classic 80s video game that was a definitely a coin suck because it's, <laughs> it's all pattern based right Oh um, yeah. You have to go forward. You have to hit the sword, go left, go right, hit the sword. And you know, uh so I beat the first level of it and I'm now on Dragon's Lair two. Wow. Just you, a, you know, kids these days, and maybe I'm showing my age, they probably my daughter has no idea what coins are. We go somewhere, we get a cart, we swipe the cart, and 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 that's that. They don't know about taking, you know, a twenty dollar bill, going up to the uh, the change machine and Getting yep. you, your your uh forty tokens. Yep, I um, still have a, I still have tokens from Aladdin's Castle, Chuck E. Cheese, uh, Arcade Parade, all these places I used to go to. Someone wants to know. I mean, we'll, we'll do five minutes of fan questions. Are you any good at Smash Brothers? No. <laughs> uh, he said he's he said no, guys. Yeah, I mean, so like with most games, I'm extremely ADHD, and I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> right because i'm old so i can't play for long periods of time anymore i like to just get on run a couple runs play some. i love uh, ssx tricky snowboarding Uh, game uh uh-huh one of one of my favorites all right uh another question is there a dream guest that you're looking forward to booking and what can fans look forward to at the april show like you know that guest that you always want but you know so so it's tough right because y'all you always have to remember that you know one adage we use if you're running a show is is you can't build a show just for yourself right you can't just bring in what you like right so you try to you try to look around try to find you know things but you know big stars have big dollars you know when you're st- you're talking Shatner, you're talking things. You're talking anywhere from a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars just to get them there. That's eight times my guest budget, right? <laughs> to, to swing to swing one guy. But you know, there's other ways to bring people in, and 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 you know, some partnerships and some things. I would really like to get uh, Neil Gaiman. Uh, author of the sandman and 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 some of that since i really enjoy that uh sandman universe and its ties into justice league dark um but you know i'm just like everybody else i mean i'm not gonna to go get a chris evans or a hemsworth or a thing you, you can go you can go any you can go other places and meet them you know it's it's foolish to and it wouldn't be fair to my fans because now all they're doing when they come to the show is stand in a line for that quick opportunity to meet that big guest. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's uh, 
for the spring show, like I said, we're leading it in a little bit to GI Joe. Uh, reason is, you know, we, we, we sit in the same town as Fort Liberty used to be Fort Bragg largest uh, military installation on the planet, 55,000 uh, soldiers that, uh, and we usually get about 2000 of them that couldn't come out this past show because of the war in Gaza. Uh, so that we took a hit. So we're going to kind of do a little welcome back, uh, them. And I'd, I'd like to get, uh, um, maybe Ray Park who I've met once. He's, uh, best known for Darth Maul, but he was also uh, snake eyes in the GI Joe two GI Joe movies. He was also uh toad in that, uh, one X-Men film. Uh, <laughs> For really like five cool dude. seconds, yeah. I, I remember that. <laughs> but All really, right. really cool dude. I mean, and it'd be it'd be cool to have him as a you know, he's one of my favorite Star Wars villains, Darth Maul. Uh yeah. his his motivations were uh I'm not gonna say aligned with mine, but I understood him. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that. All right, guys. Um that was I only allotted for 30 minutes. Uh we'll see if any good questions come up. We'll probably see another question for Keith. Uh, what will he call his con's identity? I don't get it. So all cons have a little bit of an identity, right? Okay. Our our identity is we are a fan run show for fans. Okay. You know, uh, if it's geek, we've got it. So we try to not. We always offer a little bit of a different mix of anime, horror, wrestling. We have live wrestling, but it's uh, if. Our identity statement, it's a fan-run show for fans, meaning that we're not a corporation trying to shove content into people's faces and expect them to pay big money for it. We survey our guests. We get them involved. We try to come up with good uh, – We our fans try to come up with good fan experiences. Um, but we also really do uh, focus on our local talent a lot of the time. So our local comic book creators, which we have some really great ones, you know, we have, you know, minor celebrities, local celebrities that we will always try to give an opportunity to. We try to celebrate our local cosplayers, um, you know, because our identity is a fan run show for fans. We don't have the greatest benefits that bigger towns have like a lot of hotels and stuff right near the venue. Uh, but we do have free parking. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's, that's a plus but, for people who yeah. want free parking. Uh, but, I, hate yeah. it. I hate it. But anyway. Um, but uh, but like you said, our identity is a fan run show for fans. And we have a, a, a very strongly written zero tolerance policy. Uh, you know, we. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's been taught that, you know, if if it takes shutting the whole thing down to make it right. That's what we'll do. You know, we won't pander. Like we've had other guests that have had some issues in the media that we've had, and then they've asked to come back. And I've just been like, no, I, I you know, I, I get it. I, but I'm not going to bring you back because that puts my, my credibility is, is then spent on bringing you the guest back who has some, you know, whether it's inappropriate behavior tied to you in the mirror or something, even if you didn't do it, I, I, I don't care, right? I have fans coming in to the room, you know, young people coming into the room. I'm protecting them. I don't need to protect you. You can go to any show you want. My people need to stay in town, you know, with the money they have or, or whatever they have. So, you know, it's always looking to take the right side you know, do what's right. And, and, you know, so we, uh, do a pretty, you know, I think you, you know, uh, Chris Ace, one of my guys, uh, we do a pretty <laughs> yeah. good, um, deep dive, you know, like you say, the, you know, we're going to investigate before we put them on the, <laughs> before we put them on the roster. You dig, bro. You like to dig. So, yes. And you, I, I commend you on on having standards and standing on morals when it comes to booking talent, because like you said, there are cons out there who's going to, well, this person's going to get make me some money, so I'm going to book them no matter what. I may not advertise them, I may do it under the table, but they're going to be there. And, We're going to, and that, but that's the thing is that they don't always make 
promoter's money because you can't tell why somebody came to the show. It's it's really hard, right? It, there are, you know, we get the we get the same number of people really, no matter who we bring. Mm-hmm. So it's the number of people that defines it, not the who we bring. Um, and sure, you get a lot of attention if you're bringing in Steve or Mel or or you know some other big name that people want want to meet. Great, but that doesn't necessarily make the show money it makes the person money yeah yeah and we just kind of gamble that people are going to want to come see them and you know but Mm -hmm. but i'll close i'll close out that yeah we will believe and 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 if we could convince other cons that are coming up small shows yeah i've mentored some other folks who who have started some small shows that have you know, a retail spot behind it. Like, it's always great if you can have a con and you're a comic book store, right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> now you're just having a bigger reason to people come buy your stuff. See, I just don't have that. But if, you know, I'm not, you know, telling you, but uh, I was an Eagle Scout, you know, the tenants of Eagle, of, of an Eagle Scout, you're trustworthy, you're loyal, you're helpful, you're friendly, you're courteous, kind, you're obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. If you just kind of live like that as you're trying to build an organization, it's done on trust. And then people could come together and be who they want to be and how they want to be at low stress. You know, we don't have one of those everybody yelling at each other across the room cons to get in lines or stop running or drop. And, but we got, you know, 5,000 people running around. It's just... You know, you just have to decide what you can do. So. Well said. Well, thank you, Keith. I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us for the time you spent. Um, We wish you all the best. And guys, if you plan on going to FCC, get them hotels now. It's not too many close to the to the to the venue. Book them them flights as well. Thank you so much, Keith. Yep. I, I appreciate your time, especially, you know, not just, and, and thank you for, for recognizing, I wasn't looking for no other recognition than you see somebody do something bad and, and, and leaders speak. Right. And, you know, I represent a, a Let significantly large geek and nerd community that, you know, got angered and hurt and there have to be consequences there. And, you know, if fans don't stop, you know, giving celebrity the power over them, if or and if and then if uh, celebrities don't stop thinking that they need these booking agents to do what they do and they and they let them be more than just what they really are, which is just accountants and clerks. Right when they start letting them speak their mind on on <laughs> issues and sure everybody has should have a chance to speak their mind but if you do something like that in the nfl oh you're, you're done you're, you're done toast. if you do something like that in hollywood you're not getting an oscar so it's the way the world works that you you cannot excuse evil if you're trying to do something good you know, it's the one bad apple spoils a bunch. It's any one of those analogies. But, you know, I read the uh, Fopology, which uh, which <laughs> coming out of an intelligence officer and public relations background, I could tell you somebody wrote that for me because it, it's intended to it's intended to not say I'm sorry, but make oh, people think you said you're sorry. Yes, yes. It uh, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, including most people in my audience. And yeah. He said he would. He might do it again. So you, I'm like, oh, it, it was just too much, too cringe for me. And so there's, and then you know everything you know your other guest was was sharing. There's a pattern of behavior, and if the pattern of behavior is there because of the role he's playing, there is nothing the community could do to help him more than to help get him out of those situations, right? <laughs> it'll, it'll help, it'll help the man. If it's the stress and the celebrity and the, and that that's making him behave in a way like that. Cause he wasn't a ranger. Nope. Right. 
he wasn't in the cast. He just happened to be a booking agent that ran across these people. Should not really be speaking on things like that. I mean, I'll talk about anything, but I'm not going to talk about, you know, have a little bit of a filter, you know. Uh, I agree, you know, and you you hit the nail on the head. Any other industry, he's done. He's toast. Yeah. But, you know, for some strange reason, some people want to uh, keep keep them, keep booking with them or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but And it just, and I get it, you know, but I don't get the immediately increase the price of autographs on your oh, eBay. Oh, shit. Oh, keep, Keith. Keep, he, but I I wish the worst of you, but I'm still going to show you and me, you know, posing on the in memoriam page. You know. Oh yeah, he he still has JDF on the memoriam page, and it it is disgusting. He has Peter Mayhew on there too. Um, I. I, I don't know what's going through a lot of people's mind who who continue to book with him, but there he goes right there. There's Peter Mayhew. Um, and if I believe if you scroll up, you will see, you know, JDF somewhere in here. Uh, yep. There he goes right there. Um, you would think that after making such a post, you remove him from the website completely. Yep. And it, it's unfortunate that, you know, when people think of this day, they're going to remember uh, Zach's post about him. It, yep. it, it, it sucks for the family and all parties involved. Yep. And, but, uh, and I, something that always has caught me weird about agents is, you know, I like to go to a show or somebody comes to the show and I get a picture with somebody. I, I absolutely, I love it. I love that picture I have with, with Billy D Williams. I love a picture I have with Frankie Muniz, who's uh, Malcolm from Malcolm in the middle, who grew up in the town I live in here in North Carolina. You know, those are just cool. And you share them with people and you, then I file it away. But he he doesn't have on his pages pictures of the celebrity doing celebrity things. It's a picture of him and the celebrity. Ah, right? it's, yeah, it's him and the celebrity. And and that's there's a you know a false pride. Something about that just rubs me wrong. Right? It's every one of his guests. Here's he and he and that guy. He and that guy. Or gal, you know, not well. Here's Barbara Goodson, and then here's Barbara's, you know, character Rita, or you know, so it's just here's a picture of Zach and whoever, right? Oh, man, there's a, uh, there's a little bit of ego there that, yeah. You know, hey, you are cooking, <laughs> and I one I didn't want to like go there, but when you went there, I was like, all right, cool. This is what I, you know. This is what I wish most people would do and come out and take a hard stance and not just, you know, kind of sweep it under the rug for the sake of making money. So in today's day and age where everything is out there, you look for signs of people you want to do business with. And the other agents that I no longer will do work with and made it formally known are those that made it way too difficult for me to work with the guest they put up they don't want you talking directly to the guest because they're so scared that you're going to steal them right <laughs> so they have to be the, they have to be in the middle which delays everything any flight change anything it's like i, I call the agent get the agent involved or you just want to do something fun and the agent didn't tell the talent so now the talent doesn't want to go do the panel because they weren't and you know I just tell them all and say, I'm paying you all to be here for two days. You do whatever I ask you to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, sometimes, that's, sometimes that's how it has to be, you know, but um, it's, it's funny, but funny is not the right word. It's, it's that, it's that feeling of a little bit disturbed. Like I'm disturbed by it and I find it queer and funny that, that uh, people behave as a celebrity when they're not celebrities well or said. people behave like they're huge celebrities. Yeah. When, when they're not huge celebrities. You I know? mean, when the post went live, it was like, well, who is he? 
And then I had to go, I had to go dig them up and like, oh, I thought it was just some random fan making some stupid post. And then lo and behold, uh, it turned out to be someone uh, connected to the industry. Yeah. But man, Keith, this has been so, phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal interview. Yeah. And I just, I, I just hope people realize that that conventions are a, it, you know, that con, a congregation, right? That Congress, it's that place where we gather to share our common love for whatever it is, whether it's science fiction, books, movies, comic books, cosplay, whatever fandom it is, whether, you know, it's Rangers, Beetleborgs, Re Rangers and Beetleborgs, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And everybody involved in putting on an event like that needs to be putting fans first and the feelings of fans and the experience that a fan is going to have meeting a celebrity or getting pictures with the cosplay or participating in a trivia contest or an art contest. It's that experience that is the value that we bring. Anything else, there's no value, right? The, the infighting, the, the, constant who's my agent who's this agent? who's booking this it's when the show is on the curtains up that's when the value is and everybody that plays a part of that needs to understand that and i just think this individual for example and 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 some other agents and promoters uh forget that forget that there's somebody on the other end that bought a ticket that none of it would matter if they weren't there so fans first well Man, well said. We'll we'll end on that note, Keith. Everyone, please put Keith in the chat. Give him a round of applause for taking time out of his day to uh, be so candid about the recent events, man. All right, Keith, I'm going to drop you down. Wonderful interview. Thank you so much. Again, thank you for everything you do uh, in the community. You're also enjoyable to, uh, to watch. And find <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> all right i'm, I'm about to get key. <laughs> anything you, anything you need hit me up anytime all right all right we'll i will keep that in mind i'll keep that in mind all right thank you Keith. all right that was keith everybody god damn what a great interview jesus did anyone expect him to call out austin st john for raising the goddamn prices <laughs> i caught that shit and i was like he i wish i had the thing loaded i didn't know keith was going to go in. i didn't know he was i didn't know keith was choosing violence he was like no 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 i'm not letting that shit rot he's not letting it rot and i appreciate him uh as they say as the, as the kids say standing on business standing on principles standing on morals uh guided by the tenets of the boy scouts uh we appreciate him friend of the show for forever um because he definitely didn't have to do that and he definitely have to be so honest you know we're uh, people are risking getting canceled, losing viewerships. I, I forgot to ask him, was he attacked by uh, any, you know, crazy fans for taking such a hard stance against uh, Zach? And uh, I think he did a great job calling out the people who still going to just throw away their morals just to, you know, potentially make a couple bucks or not ruffle any feathers. But what did you guys think? <laughs> what did you, I was? A, look, he was cooking so much. I was just like, I'm not saying nothing. I had a set list of questions. And um, he just start he start answering them. And I was like, shit, I, I had to start pivoting. Like, OK, what you know, what happened with you growing up? Hey, what, what, what are the daughters into? I was just like, you know, all over the place. But I'm um, extremely grateful, extremely happy uh, that he showed up because, you know, people be flaking on me sometimes. But uh, shout out to Keith and make sure you guys book the FCC. All right. Let me get into some of these contributions. I'll let Keith. I'll let him go. I'm going to kick him from the backstage. I know he, he was a great guest, man. Great guest. Great. Please, please go support him um, because he's selling the experience and not a stupid autograph like some of these other places. All right. Woo. Woo. I'm, I'm happy. I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy. I'm happy because it came through. But what, what did my man Chad say? Hey, you got to go to FCC at some point after this interview. Now, <laughs> You right, right? You right. I do right. That'd be crazy. And you know, I would. You know, me. Look, here's the thing. When I go to cons, because I know people hate me. I know people like, hey man, you you know how they be. You know how they be. You you know how they be. Henry, fuck you and your fake ass. You a fake ass.
I'll be like, oh my goodness, man. So when I go to cons, I gotta, you know, I gotta be low. I gotta, I gotta get in. I gotta get out. I gotta check in with security. Um, we have another guest coming up. Another guest coming up. But man, that I, I don't even have time to process what Keith said. But hopefully, you guys caught it. He did call out ASJ for raising um, uh, prices on autographs. It is what it is. Maybe when I, when I cut the video, I'll throw that in there. Uh, just to, just to kind of show it, um, Sam reset up his own table. Y'all tripping, man. You really think I can get a table? it will just be Brent coming to see me and Brent, Brent be pulling up in his private jet. All right. So we have another guest, uh, that is coming up to the stage. Uh, let me, let me get everything set up for him. You like another one. I'm like DJ Khaled, another one, another one. You like, God damn. I, I know. Right. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> So uh, let me, uh, I got to go to my Instagram. Give me a second. And we got two guests. This day is going to be Pizak. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, then we'll probably take a break. I got to get back to my, <laughs> my Twitch people. They like, uh, let, me, let me see how many people watching on Twitch right now. You like, Henry, how many people are watching on Twitch? Um, I'll tell you one second. We got eight people watching on Twitch. Shout out to all 80 y'all. It's probably like Jack and uh some other people, but I appreciate it. You know, Twitch, I don't know if you guys know, but Twitch is my largest audience. Um, but anywho, I serve like so many different people. I got the the whatchamacallit. Let me uh send this invite to Kevin. Please check your DMs, brother. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, I gotta, I gotta go to right here. All right, Kevin, the link to join StreamYard is in your DMs. Um, I, bruh, I could not think. <laughs> uh, I, oh, there is a troll amongst us, guys. There is a troll amongst us. You know, there is a, you know, someone's son who's like infatuated with me, keeps watching. And I got like a, I got a, I got a post on, uh, I have a post on uh, Instagram currently going viral right now. So uh, I got to deal with that. Give me, I'm waiting on him to hit the link. Kevin Lyle, please hit the link, brother. Please hit the link if you can. Um, let me share some stuff. Sorry, guys. I go. <laughs> this is what it's like when, like, I prepared so much for Keith that I may have left some other people hanging. All right, waiting on him to hit the link. He said he's. Uh, Matthew said he's ready. Maybe Matthew can coach him up. Is he having any difficulties? Uh, what's your guarantee for your table? Zero dollars, man. Like, if you knew how I felt about the the the, the money aspect of it. Brent knows we talked we had talked about it at Ignazium. Shout out to Chorizo on Twitch. <laughs> Shout out to my Twitch people. I mean, I put on a great show. It's just uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh Matthew, can you get Kevin Lyle to uh come up? Okay, well, without Kevin Lyle, uh, we'll go this right here. All right, so you guys are wondering who is Kevin Lyle? All right, so Zach McGinnis, right? Here we go. We'll do the, let me go to my, Zach, Ta Zach Taylor McGinnis. Uh, he said this about um, Kevin Lyle. Where is he at? Uh, he said, of course, this dip-ish was involved with Intergalacticon. He was so happy to feel important by handling transportation on behalf of Joey Gates. Another dip-ish. Like, look at him. He's just going at everybody. Kevin identifies as an actor's agent, LOL. He reps nobody beyond uncredited extras. Like, this is, this is, this is harsh. This is public, too. This is just another many events Kevin is involved with that was just another cluster F. This boy can't tell his, you know, backside from his backside a hole. Uh, in the ground, like, what, what is this? But, you know, he's not, you know, grammatic, <laughs> grammatically, Zach, we probably need to get him into some, uh, some grammar classes. Pathetic. Stay away from anything that Kevin Lyle is involved with for a multitude of reasons. 
The force is not strong with this idiot. Bahahaha. Karma is a beautiful thing. <laughs> the irony, right? <laughs> the irony. Karma is a beautiful thing, Zach. And I think you are experiencing it right now. Right now. You know what? Here, you know what I'll do? I'll do it with the link. I'll drop it in the chat. Um, I didn't even think about that. <clears throat> I'll drop the link in the chat. Invite. Copy. And shout out to my man, Dust. This is for Kevin Lau, because he may be like, Henry, I'm not logging into Instagram and checking no messages. All right, this link is just for Kevin. Just for Kevin. No one else. Only Kevin. Let me pin it to the top. Give me a second. But what do you guys think about him saying this about another person in the industry? And uh, Keith was right. There is a pattern. There is a pattern of behavior. And that was one of my questions. I just didn't get to it. <clears throat> I just didn't get to it. Um, maybe I'll, I'll show you all my questions I had. He was like, yo, you had questions? Like, yeah, man, I had questions. I prepped for it. I see Matthew C. Egan is back here, but that's not the person we want to talk to. We want to talk to Kevin. Where's Kevin? He was ready. Matthew, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, look. While we wait on Kevin, we going to bring up the showstopper, the man who, who used to get that nose candy for the vampire slayers. <laughs> Shack Look, he's a streamer. He, he, he has some special effects up here. Uh, you see, he has some handcuffs or whatever. I don't know what type of freaky stuff he into. <laughs> good, good evening. I, I'm just here in my Austin St. John cosplay tonight. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. It makes it really hard to type. Oh no, not him! Not him cosplaying as ASJ. I think oh, that's why man. Austin's apology <laughs> acknowledgement for Zach was so shitty because it was he, he was wearing the handcuffs while he was writing it. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! All right, Matthew, what did it's you? Time. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh, well, he doesn't need a master morpher. He's the total package, okay? He is the total package. A king ranger, he is not. <laughs> he, oh, well, you know, tell him that. When I did you call Kevin? He was texting me going, am I up now? Yeah, I, I told him now? I told him around 9.30. I texted him. I said, are you having trouble? I, uh, I, I messaged him. I posted the link. Uh, the ASJ cosplay is is going over well in the audience. I know. I know. <laughs> I see the corner of my eye. It's just moving really fast. I know Zach is watching right now. I know he's watching. I got on good authority that he watches the channel, and I think uh, maybe Keith knew that. <laughs> maybe Keith knew I that. Got, I got my clipboard. So all of the reasons that Zach will sue us. Uh, <laughs> I got it ready. I'm going to keep notes every time Kevin says something that is clearly defamation. Uh, I'm just going to mark it off on my list. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Kevin just texted me back. He says, I've got to download a bunch of stuff. So, oh, man. So okay. Brent really wants to know who called me about him. But I kind of feel like we should make him wait. I, I would uh, agree. Let's talk that interview. I, absolutely. Let's talk the interview. Yeah. What what did you think about Keith Gibbs interview? Like I tried to cut it short, but he was like, no, no, no. Let me cook just a little bit longer. I, I got to give the man credit for having a show that doesn't do guarantees and is still successful. Cause that's like, you know, we're talking about having a show come out and say that they will never book with a, with a, with an agent again. I've never known of an example of that happening ever. Right. So again, like rule, like, so that's one of the reasons why Zach will sue Keith. <laughs> Check. All right. So uh, I'm going to keep notes. I'm going to keep tallies uh, all night. Um, but like, I, I agree. And, and there's a couple um colossal con is like that too, where they, they don't like having the agents there. They're like, we pay people to sit with the people to do the tallies and stuff. That's their sole job. They will wait with them. They will bring them food. Like they will make sure that they're hundred percent comfortable. But like, and, and I, I went as an agent and I was like, like, and they were just like, we don't want you here. And it was, it was really, there's not a lot of shows that are like that because of that age and culture that Keith was talking about that makes everything so toxic. Yeah. But I remember we were at LexCon in Kentucky and they were on the, on the loudspeaker or on the, like the earpiece thing. And they're all like, uh, we need a banana for Lou Ferrigno. It's very urgent. Uh, uh, everyone, uh, uh, all hands, all hands. We need a banana for Lou Ferrigno. And it was like, it became a meme that we would like, we'd see each other at other shows and be like, Hey, 
Uh, did we ever get that banana for Lou Ferrigno? Like, it, like <laughs> oh my it, goodness! Like everybody drops everything, and 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 sometimes it's fans taking it too far. It's people like Brent taking it too far, and and you know getting a little too excited because they met. You know, uh, Brent, you need to be nicer to Karen Ashley. She's not who called, but you need to be nicer to Karen ooh, Ashley. Ooh, ooh, that's a nice Love woman right life. there. She was. Ooh, you know, Brent. Brent yeah. is Mr. Uh, I'm going to get Brent in my Austin St. John cosplay, okay? <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, uh, Brent is an acquired taste. I've I've grown to accept Brent for uh, Brent being Brent. You know, he has his own emoji. I know, I know he's not popular amongst some of the people in here, but we're, we're a family, you know? He's the cousin that people may not like, but he's still family. He's still part of the family. You know, we'll talk ish about him, but we'll defend him if maybe other people talk ish about it, except for April. Absolutely. You know, except for April. They no, don't I'm, I'm team April tonight because I got a very, uh, uh, I got two phone calls last night from the same two two phone calls. Oh, about so Brent? We'll talk about that later. Brent, Brent can wait. Oh. We'll, get, we'll get down to it. Well, after you talk about your mama again, then we'll talk about what Brent. <laughs> Shout what, what out to Brent. my mom. I'll come back on uh, after and, and then so we'll talk about Brent. How did you get involved with Khan, Matthew? It's actually a really cool story. Um, so uh, I own a SEO company, website company. Um, I, I closed it to start the charity. That we, we have a charity now that we only make content for other charities that don't have like a web team or a video team or whatever. After streaming on Twitch and you, you know, so all, all these skills that you've learned, you know, <laughs> I, I, I took those to help charities. And uh, so all the way back at Alamo City Comic Con, which uh, your boy, uh, legend of the nerd down there, uh, legacy of nerd like he remembers alamo city but year one they didn't have banners and so i was there as a handler i was working with um jim cummings darkwing duck okay uh, amazing guy i love that guy and uh and i was like like i made 11 banners and i was like at his table i'm gonna put down my legal document for a moment <laughs> I, I i was like I was like taking money with one hand and i was designing banners with the other hand like sitting at, at the table like like selling autographs or whatever Kevin, uh, I see you in the background. In. But so Peter Mayhew was one of those banners. Mm -hmm. That's how I started working with the family. And uh, Angie Mayhew, who became like a second mother to me, like I, I love this woman to death. Uh, but she uh, she was the only one that paid me. So out of 11 <laughs> banners that I made, which I'm like, that's my labor. My, you know, like I didn't care. It wasn't a big deal. But she was the only one that like tipped me. So like, here you go. Like, thank you. And and. Uh, and it was like 150 bucks or something like that for making, you know, so it was, it was nice. Like I still don't get paid 150 bucks for making some banners. So, oh. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Matthew, for saying that story. I'm going to drop you down. Yes, sir. I'll be uh, here. Wait, wait, Kevin, where'd you go? All right. Kevin is here. We're going to bring up Kevin. All right. Uh, dropping Matthew down, bringing up Kevin. Uh Oh, here, here, go, here goes the That's man me. of the hour. Uh, this is Kevin, uh, star Wars fan. An artist. An artist, a uh, contracted artist with um, the Star Wars Comic Cons. He travels with them. He sets up uh, panels, if I recall correctly. And he's had a, some very unfortunate experiences with uh, Zach Taylor McGinnis, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, yeah, you know, just, just so I can get the word out here. I mean, I, I, I saw what Zach wrote, and, and, and it was disgusting. And it's it's uh, it's pretty typical of what he does. And he has for years has been a thorn in my side because I, I hung out with him one night and, and, and he I, I, I don't know what he was expecting from the one night that I met him. And and uh, he had made a comment that something about without without someone like him, I would be nobody like because <laughs> I because I'm an artist at conventions and I run panels. And uh, I, I might have said something not 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 nice to him because that was a rude thing for him to say. He wanted me to go up to his room or something and drink with him. And I was like, yeah, uh. I don't do that. <laughs> and because, uh, um, you know, I'm not as big as your last guest. I'm only 6'5", but, I mean, maybe he likes tall guys or something. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. He wanted me to come hang out with him. I'm like, no, I, I'm going to bed. And then he's like, you know, without me, you'd be nothing. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, you little, I, I don't know exactly what I said because, to be honest, I like, totally blocked it out of my mind. I didn't. I didn't. Did you lose me? No, uh, you have a, a slight delay going on. I, I can hear you fine. Okay. But um, it's like so, you're behind maybe like five seconds. Like the audio is not lining up with the visual. Oh. Is that my fault? Uh, more than likely, yeah. But you were cooking, so 
I'll, I'll remain to cook. <laughs> Keep um, cooking. So I, I had totally forgotten the situation. And if you would ask me who Zach McGinnis was the next morning or five years from now, I would have totally forgotten him. But I, I got to the show, and the and the organizer of the show was like, uh, "It's like this guy, this guy Zach is trying to kick you out of the show and getting you not only just kicked off the stage, but he wants you out of the show." And they're like, well, "We're not doing that because you're our stage host." And so they um, uh, they told him no to 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 grow up. We're not firing Kevin. And then um, for, for years, I, I would have gone to shows and I get the same thing where some promoter comes up and says, "Hey, this guy Zach McGinnis is trying to get you kicked out." But don't worry about it. We're not going to because we like you. You do a good job. We love you working working for shows. And and uh, you know, because um, part of what I do is I, I have to be professional and I have to be uh, uh, good at my job and not gawking at people or you know gawking at all the you know you and McGregor or Ian McDammer or whoever I'm interviewing. And mm -hmm. I like to think I'm I'm pretty good at it. I've done it for a number of years. And for Zach to sit there and just try to cancel me every time because I rejected him one night is just <laughs> fucking bullshit. And then um, let it out. But, but Zach. And I had forgotten about him, other than seeing him at cons and people telling the stories that I heard about him, the, the horrible thing he said about Peter, the horrible thing he said about Angie when she passed. Uh, you know, he was he was buying champagne or something like that. I remember it was it was uh, I was at I was at uh, MegaCon and he was at some other convention across the country, but he was buying champagne at the bar the day that she died. Where here I was with the five hundred first, we were all mourning the fact that she had passed. He's just a horrible person. I hear stuff like that for years, and then. Um, Zach never forgot me, I guess, and he, he ended up going to a show, and he would not sign the contract. He was bringing five actors. Are we uh -huh. good? Yeah, we're we're good. I mean, you're still behind, but you just keep cooking. Hello? I'm I'm letting you cook. You have the floor. Like okay. I think you may be on Wi-Fi, and not a landline. And what's happening is your audio is coming in quick, but you're you're like this in the <laughs> in the uh, well, my voice is better than the way I look. I have a better sound than I do. I'm I'm more of a radio guy. So I'll just keep going. So anyway, he, um, I hadn't heard of Zach in years. And what he had done is he had waited till he got a show that I was at that he brought a bunch of people to. And then with that, he, he threatened to cancel everybody unless I was removed from the show. And uh, and, and and I was. But uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, that, that show, uh, they, they, they were apologetic. And they're like, listen, he's got all these people, whatever. But that show called me up and congratulated me when Zach McGinnis – posted all that shit last week they're like you're never gonna, i guess you're never gonna have to deal with him again because his, his agent his agent business is over with and uh, i don't I'm, I'm know sure. it looks like asj is sticking with him and maybe some other asj people. is going to fucking prison unless you're going to be signing in fucking attica i don't see him much of a chance of being a fucking agent asj is going to prison you don't steal four hundred thousand dollars from the fucking government and not go to jail He's going to, and the thing is, there are situations like this where someone can like, uh, can be the, uh, can be the, uh, the guy who rolls over and tries to get a deal, but he's a public face. They're not, they're not going to want to do that. They're going to go, they're going to go after him. That's why they're going to trial. Notice he, he would have made some kind of deal if he could. It was a matter of getting some money or something like that. I mean, I'm not saying the guy's guilty or not. I'm just saying from, from what I'm looking at, uh, it, it looks like he's in, he's in pretty big trouble. So, um, and, and Zach's got some other agents. I know personally five or six people that were his agent a month ago that are not his agent now, that he's not the agent for now. I also have several friends that were actors a long time ago and no longer are. I know, I know some pretty big Star Wars uh, uh, celebrities that used to be, uh, that used to work for him that don't anymore. Yeah. How did, has the whole, you know, wishing um, Peter Mayhew a slow death, has that made the rounds through the uh, Star Wars community? Are they aware he felt, felt like that about Peter Mayhew, someone he rep for years? A lot of them are aware, and I've spoken to some of them, and that's a little bit harder of a thing to believe. You know, when you read the post that he had, and, and everybody says, like, oh, you know, it was a bad moment of thinking that he made that post about um, JDF and being glad that he was dead. He left that fucking thing up for 13 hours. For 13 hours, he left that up. And I think people said he even interacted with some of the people commenting. So that was 13 hours. That wasn't just a, he typed in and went, oh, that was a bad mistake. I'm sorry. You know, he, he did it for 13 hours. And from, from what I recall, it, I first saw it at like two or three in the afternoon and it had been up for 10 hours. And then four or five hours later, he took it down. And uh, so it, it was up for a long time. The, the whole world saw it. And um, I can't for the life of me remember what your point was. Oh, Peter Mayhew. The thing about Peter, what he said about Peter Mayhew 
is that I spoke to two actors who both independently told me that sounds like something he would say. That, uh, you know, that he wishes that he would die a slow death. Not just, uh, I hated him, I want him to die, but the, 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 added, the added story of dying a slow death. That's, that, in, in, this is what I think personally, it's indicative of somebody who knew Peter. I knew Peter. Your other guest, Matt Egan, knew Peter. Peter was in pain pretty much for the last 20 years of his life. And he was in severe pain as it got as he got older and older was was constantly in pain and when you're I'm, I'm, I'm a tall guy too but he's a foot taller than me so i can't imagine the, the knee and back problems that peter had to go through uh go through life and the thing is is that most people might not think of that zach who was his agent for a number of years remembers that he was in pain that he was not dying but he was you know he was uh he was in a lot of pain and then in, in zach's mind him dying would be slow and painful and uh, a slow death, so to speak. And uh, so I believe Zach said that. So back, back to the original question, uh, the two actors I spoke to about it believed that Zach said it, and they thought it was horrible. They thought it was just, it was just horrible. Wow. And there, and the, the actors you spoke to who used to rep him one month ago, you said they've removed him? Yeah, and I, I'd like to, you know, I, I was, I told the actors that I, that I know that I, that I wouldn't mention their names and and, and I'll tell you the truth. I said to them, I says, that's how Zach's gotten away with it for so many years because people are freaking scared of him. They're either scared of him or they're also scared of looking like uh, like a tattletale. Like, uh, you know, they don't want to get involved. And um, uh, But they don't like him. And they want, they want to get rid of him. I, I don't know anybody right now who in Star Wars who is represented by Zach McGinnis. As far wow. as I know, nobody is. And he still has a lot of them on his client list page. Which is I, mean, I know for a fact he doesn't have he doesn't have Matt Wood and he doesn't have Daniel Logan. I know that yeah. for a fact. They the people told us that they contacted him and said, Get me off your website. And he hasn't booked some of them for like three years. And he still has them on the website because he booked them for one thing a long time ago and he's still booking on their name. He still has JDF on his website after what he freaking said. You could look it up and picture him and JDF like they're best freaking buddies. Yeah, um, I, I I have that picture. It's right here. Um, it, it's unfortunate that you know he won't take them off, even after everything he said about them. Uh, I mean, I look, at their, their, look at their hugging, Matt. I've known you for ten years. Have you and I ever taken a picture together like that? And we're pretty good friends. These two, they they, they look like they're best buddies. He's got that up there, but at the same time, he's writing pictures about how I'm glad you're dead. The guy in the blue is happy that the guy in the green is dead. Yeah, and it's you know, freaking horrible. Uh, Keith kind of called it out. He said, "Hey, he's trying to be a celebrity, and you can kind of tell because he's in all the pictures." So he may I mean, have. Kevin, this... I have this picture of me eating a churro out of your ear <laughs> oh my God. From, uh, from, from Providence, Rhode Island. So, I mean, do you want to talk about pictures that we have of each other? <laughs> <laughs> goodness. Oh my good. So, Matthew, you I were there to told you after you took that picture to fucking delete it. Oh, shit. prick. Uh oh. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. So the way it works, guys, the way the sound works, it will it will automatically cut out anyone else who like tries to talk. So it kind of has to be one at a time per se. I will raise my hand. All right. So Matthew, you were here to witness some of the atrocities that Kevin uh Leo is it Lyle or Leo? Like uh, it's this? it's Lyle. All right. He you witnessed some of the atrocities. Or maybe we're aware of some of the atrocities that Kevin Lyle experienced. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And what was probably like one of the most heinous ones that uh, you were made aware of from your from your outside perspective? So it, it 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 plays into that you know anything that was a threat to Zach, and and Kevin was clearly not impressed with Zach, so Zach would try to get him removed from shows. And and we were talking about that today that. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to out the promoters, but you know, we were out and uh, th these are conventions that Kevin has hosted panels for, for years. And a lot of these people, like, I don't know if you've seen panels, but they ask for specific people because they want to have a comfortable conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a lot of times they're worried about gotcha questions and things like that. They're, you know, if you have a fan, if you put Brent fucking fam up there, he's going to ask some bullshit question. That's going to get everybody pissed up. Right. So like they don't want some stranger doing the panel. They want somebody that they know. And so they requested Kevin, right? I, he, Kevin hosted the panel with Ewan McGregor. It was, it was a uh, standing room only. It was absolutely insane. Right. So like, this is a guy 
who he doesn't fanboy out. He asks the right questions. He knows the field. And then Zach will come and say, hey, I'm going to pull this guest if you let Kevin host these panels, right? And I guarantee you the guest had no idea. I guarantee you Zach was doing this because he hates him and not because the guest had any problems with it. And I heard from a, a guest, I, I reached out to a couple of people. I was like, hey, just so you know, you're on his roster. Um, you know, this is what's being said. Fayetteville is, is blacklisting people. And he said, oh, I stopped working with him because uh, I wanted Kevin to host my panel. And oh. that was enough. But he's out there trying to destroy livelihoods. And he's trying to get, you know, Kevin not invited back. <sighs> he's well, it's all good. The, 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 house, the, you know? the, the convention that he knocked me out of, I'm, I'm, I'm back working with. But it's just... Uh, it, it, it was just terrible that he would do that. Not thinking like, you know, I have a family. I, I got a daughter downstairs. I got, I got a house and I got, you know, I got, I got things to pay for. I have a family here and, and he doesn't care about that. He doesn't oh. care at all. And it's, and it's not like I stole from Zach and it's um, like uh, 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 Mr. Henry, you were talking about uh, the post that he made about, about me working at some show in Rochester, New York. And he's like, Kevin ruined the show and Kevin's a dipshit and he thinks he's this, he thinks he's that. I have no idea why this guy attacked me because, you know, Zach and I sued each other uh, three or four years ago uh -huh. and our lawyers worked it out where we would not talk about each other anymore. And then, uh, you know, there he is back in June uh, insulting me. There, there's the, the, uh, the post that he made. Uh, it was some show that I, I worked at and the show asked me to pick up some actors that I knew from star mm -hmm. Wars and asked me to pick them up. And, uh, and I did, and I must have posted a picture or something like that. And Zach saw it and just got angry. Oh my God, Kevin's happy. So he posts this thing that I uh, that I ruined the show and everything I work with uh, falls to shit, and I'm horrible. And it's um actually I'm a pretty nice guy. And 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 one of the things people like about the fact that I, I host panels and it's and it's not just my awesome voice. It's, it's a great um, voice, by the way. Great uh, voice, phenomenal. Henry, you have great hearing. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I own I own a product development company. And I've been making Star Wars jewelry and such licensed stuff for years. So a lot of people know when they when they they're sitting there in the audience, and I walk out on the stage, or people are thinking like, "Oh, we're gonna get something for free." I've uh, I've been known to give out pins to every single person in the audience. I've thrown T-shirts out and, and patches and stuff like that. So so you know, people like me, and I work hard to make them like me. And and it's all taken away in a minute because Zach McGinnis is jealous because either I rejected him or I'm friends with Steve Constantino and I brought Steve Constantino to celebration. And that sent Jack Zach through the fucking roof. He threw Jesus. a coin at, at, at Steve Constantino. The funny thing is, is that um, I make coins, you know, for the 501st and for my own company. And he, um, I, I made one for Steve Constantino and Steve Constantino gave one to Zach and Zach threw it back at him. And I just think it's funny because it was my coin. You know, that he, that this is that guy him. sounds like a, a piece of work. Um, and you say the reason he survived so long is because people are scared to speak out. Do you think he will do any type of further damage control now that, you know, Keith Gibbs has called him out? Uh, you guys have called him out. Francis have called him out. Tammy has called him out. Pretty much any uh, JDF fan or pretty much any common decent human being has called him out and not excused his actions as a mistake. Do you think he'll do any any follow up statements? Oh, I I I think he will. I th this is this is uh this is the major focal point of his career right now. Nothing in his business has affected him positive or negative in the past ten years. Uh, you guys commented earlier about him watching this. I guarantee you, he's watching this right now. He's he's oh, was it you, Matt? He he. There's no question about. It. He's sitting down with a huge bottle of vodka because he's an alcoholic. He's an alcoholic and a drug addict. He's a freaking horrible person. And I, I, I have no problem saying that because I, I, dozens of people have talked about his alcohol problem. And, and that chances are that post that he made, he was probably drunk. But but, but, but anyway, uh, he's probably back home right now with a jug of vodka watching this and he's fuming. And he's coming, he's wondering how he's going to get me and how he's going to get you. And well, Henry, you're, you're now part of it. He's going to come after you probably. <laughs> but it's uh, just, I, I hope the, the only way he can come after us is if he has actors, as if he has shows to go to. And the thing is, this guy needs to be stopped because um, he'll do it again. He even said in his post, he's like, you know, I, I, I messed up before and, and and sadly I will again because yeah. he has a lust for it. He, he loves hurting people. He loves like that post he made about me. I'm sure he was laughing to himself. I hurt Kevin's feelings. I don't fucking care what he says. I have well, no idea. What, 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 what I don't care at all what he thinks. It will be interesting if him or uh, Austin St. John come for me. Um, 
I I doubt it. I think Austin St. John has bigger fish to fry. And Zach, oh, he won't, he won't he won't come after you. Austin St. John is just being very careful. That's why he made that like quasi acknowledgement uh, letter that he had a couple days ago on Facebook. He's trying to stay in the middle though. He's not going to bother anybody. He's not going to yeah. bother. He wants this to go away. I, I to be honest, I, I thought he'd get rid of Zach just to save face, not just because it's the right thing to do. You know, and I, I feel a little bit, you know, selfish that, that the reason I'm on here is because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stop Zach because he's hurting my career and it shouldn't be about me. It should be about um, I don't know how many children JDF has, but I know he has two daughters and yeah. that was horrible that they had to read that. And I, forgive me, I don't know if he has other children, but, you know, those his two girls and, and you know, I'm sure I'm sure they're adults, but but they're, they're, they're always going to be his girls. And. For him to, to to say that and to see their their responses to it, it's just it's just it's it's horrible. So it really shouldn't be about me trying to save my career from Zach because he has hurt me. I mean, I spent twenty five hundred dollars in legal fees alone against Zach. Not to mention, you know, probably seven or eight panels that I missed, ten or whatever, and, and and all the other all the other cons that that stood with me, but still in the back of their head, they're like, well, why is Zach doing this to Kevin? Maybe there's something there, and um, you know, like like for instance. You know, ICCC in Nashville, which uh, which will be announcing uh, its next show in two days. By the oh, way, okay. for next October, that's the best Star Wars show out there. And you know that that guy's Mike Havens has always stood with me. Um, and then uh, you know, and, and and many others. Uh, another one is this this coming weekend, WinterCon in New York City. I can't go because I already have a show commitment in Columbus. Which, funny speaking of that of Columbus, uh, Austin St. John is going to be there. Austin right? St. John is going to be there, and, and I am going to talk to him. And uh, hopefully Zach will be there because he's on Zach's list. Whoa. Are you going to get an interview with him or is it just going to be like, hey, are you still repping? Oh, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to him and say, you need to get rid of your agent. I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, if I had an interview with him, that'd be hilarious. Uh, no, I'm not doing any of uh, this. Is just, this is just strictly my company. We're, uh, we're, we're, we got a booth there. We're selling stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing any interviews. But um, which is which stinks because I was supposed to do some interviews at WinterCon. This weekend in New York City, but I can't because I've got. To, I already signed up for Columbus. Trust but um, me, uh, you're you are not going to be the first person that told ASJ to get rid of Zach, and you won't be the last. And I don't think Zach. I don't think ASJ wants to ruffle any more feathers. He he would look like an idiot if he got rid of Zach now after backing him uh, with his fake post and then putting it on fan word that hey, people make mistakes. Well, that's a sign of acceptance. If you get rid of them now, we now know it's just monetarily. Yeah, that's true. But I think I think there's always a chance for someone to redeem themselves. I think there's always a chance. You know, I, I would I would even say Zach has a chance to redeem himself, if not for the long history of things that Zach did. If um, if I made a post like this, I could guarantee it'd be horrible, and I should be I should lose everything because it's a terrible thing to write. But no one's going to come out and say, oh, Kevin's been like this for years. Kevin's always hurt people. Kevin's done this and Kevin's done that. It just wouldn't happen because I don't I'm – I'm a pretty nice guy. I mean, I could be a dick. Don't get me wrong. But it's not not to the level that Zach McGinnis is. So it's um, um, him forgiving him for this one post. Uh, it, it, is, it is wrong, but I think he should be given the chance to make amends for that. Zach can't make amends for what he did. But I think I think Austin can make amends for sticking up for Zach is what I'm trying to say. I, you know, oddly, I actually agree with that because ASJ really didn't say nothing. He just backed the wrong horse, and you know, instead of getting off it. But Matthew, uh, go ahead. You chime in. Do you think Zach is going to make another attempt to regain business in this industry? Is ASJ going to keep him? You have the floor. Yeah, I think uh, you know based on the screenshots you were showing earlier from uh, was it fan fan base. Fan work, fan word, fan work. Um, yeah. uh, which is the the most pathetic attempt to copy cameo I've ever seen. It's hilarious, but um, I had never looked at the website before. It's it's awful. Um, but uh, <laughs> the 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 post there saying you know you cannot criticize Zach, um, and then and then even just posting the apology, you know. There's a lot of uh, of overlap here between the Austin St. John representation and then and then this this website and, and what David Blair is saying here is that we understand that this has gone viral we understand that everyone's pissed off but don't worry about it 
Like we still are trying to do whatever we're trying to do and 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 make our platform that nobody gives a shit about. Please give Gotta us money on a monthly basis uh, until Austin goes to jail. So like you know, it, it, it's uh, like why would you pay twenty two dollars a month to watch someone's Instagram reels? Like I, uh, I I've always been against uh, the paywall that Fanwork has. I've never said, hey guys, go. Go go get that exclusive content if you want. It's just I, I don't know what it is. We've got a, a glimpse. It's him reacting to it's ASJ and Walter reacting to uh, YouTube videos. I've seen one of them and talking about Power Rangers and most importantly, selling you helmets and toys that uh, a lot of people perceive as overpriced. Yeah. So it, I don't mean to interrupt because of the sound issue, but what the hell is fan word? I never, I never fucking heard of it. It's Patreon for ASJ Walter in uh, the guy who plays Peter Pan. That's that's all. That's essentially what it is. Okay. Well, I, I, what, what is it? Is it like a pro web, a pro suicide website? What the oh, fu- I don't understand. Oh, they're, they're, what, the, what the fuck? They're just like like it's it's okay. It's okay to make fun of someone like this. Who the fuck are these people? David Blair. Oh. Like, oh. That was on the list. Okay, so this is fan work. They got some some eye candy up front. I, I mean, I, I I don't know what to to say other than here is their website. You can nineteen ninety seven GeoCities call and would love its website designer back. <laughs> uh, uh, here's your you, this is your landing page. You get face groups led by your hero. Uh, if this is your hero, is, oh, is Austin? Is Austin St. John or whatever his name is? Is he like a major player in this in this on this uh, uh, site? Uh, yes, you have Austin St. John, Walter, Jeremy Sumter. I don't know him. And I, I just to let you know, I'm in my 50s, so I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> not I, not a clue. I knew who JDF was because um, JDF and I had actually talked a little bit about Zach because. Um, he couldn't stand Zach either. Zach Zach was harassing him and trying to get him kicked out of shows because because uh, Zach always wanted to have his Power Rangers and he did he felt he'd lose money if the big Power Ranger, which is JDF, if he showed up. So JDF couldn't stand him. But uh, so I, I knew who JDF was just because you know every time I do a con, he's got an enormous line. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, his line's as big as William Shatner's at some of these shows. And so these these other guys, I, I mean, you know, Austin I know because he's going to prison. But the other ones, I don't, I don't really, uh, I, don't, I don't really know at all. So, but actually, I interviewed, I interviewed three Power Rangers at ICCC three years ago. Matt, do you know who those were? Uh, we were actually playing a prank on you. Those were cosplayers that we put. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I, I wasn't. I don't remember this. Michael, Michael, Michael Koopin. Michael. Michael Koopin. What? Michael Koopin. Yeah, yeah, that guy. I interviewed uh, him. Uh, uh, Tracy, Tracy, Lucy, Tracy, Lucy, Chandler, Tracy, Lucy. Um, she was yellow. She was a yellow Power Ranger. See, these are uh, these are like the newer Rangers. I'm I'm more MMPR. No, she was she was older. She 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 and the other guy were older. The other guy's name was just Justin no- Noman. Uh, Just Justin Neiman. So Kevin, I, I don't know if you have it said. I have I have chat here on my second window, and uh, Laurel is saying that she's going to make sure next time we see you, she's got a nice cigar for you. Uh, somebody was just saying uh, Kevin is a beast, no chill. <laughs> I mean, um, with age I, comes no filter. I don't speak Z, so I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds favorable. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, no, we love uh, on this show. What I get a lot of flack for is because I have people who are going to be candid, who are not going to come up here. And filter themselves and give us these cooker cookie cutter responses, kind of like what uh, Keith did with his interview. He went, he he resonated well with my audience because we hate the fluff. So I always tell people I won't get these big interviews because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna plug fan word and say hey everybody go on the fan word and you know I'm not gonna do the dog and pony show. We kind of want to get you know real interviews, real stories, real responses. So that has been my brand from uh, day one, and we don't. I, uh, I, I like him. I'm going to check. I'm going to check his show out because I think he's like a. He seems like an honest, like like sincere person, and he's no BS. Because there's a lot of a lot of con promoters, a lot of agents. There's just there's just a lot of BS, and I, I can't stand that. 
but we're hosting tonight. It's a lot like between two ferns, but it's between two Green Ranger crotches. So that's <laughs> great. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Zach watching at home, getting very excited, thinking about JDF between two crotches. So this is this is great. All right. uh, and I want to add, while, while we're on that topic, what, what tickles me fucking pink to the point where I should put a pink helmet on, just thinking about this, is that for the rest of Zach's life, something he said about Jason David Frank, the person that he hates with all his heart, is the thing that took him out. And like, I'm not, I'm agnostic. Like, I don't know what, it, whatever, but like, I kind of believe in a higher power for that level of like irony that like he hates this guy so much that like he thinks if you like Jason David Frank and you're watching this video, Zach believes that that is a personal attack against him. He hates the guy that much. And so well, I, the day, the day it happened, I emailed Zach. And I said that 10 years from now, when you wonder why you're living in a smaller house and you have less money, is because of today. Holy it's because shit. of today. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. So wait, wait, wait. You saw the post and you emailed him right away. Oh, I, I've emailed and called Zach no several response. times. No response? Oh, no, no. He, he wouldn't dare pick up the phone because he knows I'm fucking so happy. And <laughs> that's the thing I think, you know, you, you he made a very good point, um, Matt Egan made a good point there that JDF would, would be so happy that, that he took Zach down and that would bother Zach immensely. And one thing that really bothers Zach and it must kill him right now, how, just how happy the people Zach hates are. Zach doesn't like me. Zach doesn't like Mark Dodson. Zach doesn't like Steve Constantino. Zach doesn't like, uh, you know, did I ever say Matt Egan's name? He doesn't like, um, he doesn't like Matt Wood. He doesn't like, and all these people he hate are so happy. The morning after it happened, I, I text the first thing I did. I think it was Thanksgiving morning. Oh, no, it was it was the day before Thanksgiving. I was in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Great place for Thanksgiving, by the way. Um, and I texted Matt, and I'm like, I'm in such a good mood. And Matt goes back and goes, Why? And I'm like, Why do you think? Oh, and he, it was just like, he yeah, shot I can't himself in the foot. Uh, any anything anything else you want to say, uh, Kevin to Zach, or or maybe maybe ASJ, other than the fact that he's going to jail. Uh, anything you want to get off your chest about that for Zach? I would say, and, and this could be a little bit of a learning curve for Zach. I, I have learned more about business from Zach than I have from anybody else. Zach is just, Zach runs his, his, his business on emotion and he's just, he's very hurtful and we all have bad times at business bad time with competitors, bad time with people that we get along with, just things happen. And sometimes you take the wrong road and taking that wrong road would remind me of Zach and, and I wouldn't want to do that. So in, in a sense, I kind of learned a lot about how not to, to do work and how not to be in the entertainment business. The entertainment business is supposed to be a happy business. Right. And, and, and people like him make it miserable. And so I kind of, I kind of thank him for, for showing me that uh, the, what the wrong way is and, and, and just to be a polar opposite of him and you, and you'll do well. Um, I don't see Zach being in this business um, 18 months from now. And the reason I say that, it'll, it'll, it'll take some time. for People have contracts with him. People have agreements with him. He has a stockpile of all their autographs that, that I'm sure he stole from his clients. And Because uh, I've, I've heard rumors like where conventions will say we need 50 autographs for your guy to sign and we'll have your guy come. Like let's say it's uh, George Decay or something. And then uh, he'll go back to George Decay and say it's 100. And, oh, and then he'll sign extra. Now, I don't know if that's true. I'm not, I'm not, that's just the rumor mill. I'm not saying it's true, but it's things like that. So he, he has a whole stockpile of, uh, of autographs, I'm sure. And that'll, that'll survive him for a while. I'm sure he'll, he'll cut deals with his, with whatever actors he can keep. He's not going to keep any Star Wars actors because I know all of them and they all like me and they all know I'm a respectable guy. Most of the Star Wars actors I know can't stand Zach and they're, they're willing to finally start taking a stand, not, not in public. But you know, at least amongst themselves, which is more important, it's, we we need to get the actors away from him. We need to get Love the conventions away from him. He needs to leave the business, and I think I think he eventually will. And he'll probably get into like probably something with alcohol, you know, like, <laughs> uh, maybe like selling selling wine or something shit like that. And then and then he'll just drink himself to death. You know, what? I mean, hold on, we we ha we have to go back to you. Kind of glossed over this. So you think uh, he has stockpiles of signatures uh, by basically lying to his clients? saying that the con needs more signatures no on... no 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 what, what, what i what i said was i had heard rumors that he rumors, did yeah. that oh, it's all and any any, any agent 
any agent is going to have autographs from his clients. That's just, you know, they, he probably says, Hey, you did great this weekend. Can you sign 10 for me? And that's, and that's fine. I've, I've, I've worked as an agent for actors. It's one of the main reasons why Zach hates me is because I work for other actors, but you know, like, like um, Steve Constantino and Anthony Forrest and Mark Dodson is um, are, are actors I represented. And you know how much money I take from them? Zero. Zero. Now what, I'm sorry. Because I don't sorry. need to. Because I have an art, I have an art company. I have, I make enough money. I don't need to extort money from my friends. And Zach can't stand that because he can't compete with that. Now, just for the record, every time I bring Mark Dotson somewhere, he always pays me and he insists because he's just a good guy. But and 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 Anthony Forrest always buys me dinner. Same thing with uh, Steve Constantino. So All I right. get a dinner out of it. Little off top off subject. What do you think of like the new direction of Star Wars since you've been around way before? How do you feel about uh, the Force? Or what the, the fuck does way before mean? I mean, you know what I mean. You know. All right. <laughs> you know. You know. I don't want to. I don't want to say play. it. But yeah, you know, okay. You're old. I, I, I'm 51. <laughs> you make it sound like I'm, uh, I'm uh, you know, in my 80s. I um, I don't like them. I don't. I don't. I don't. I I think that I think the direction has been has been pretty bad. Um, I think a lot of people uh, agree yeah, with you. It's, it's uh, bad. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to be polite about it, but it's just. And for years, I've been like, you know, mishimashi about. But it's just, I, uh, they they were bad. They were terrible. I mean, not not to have Han, Luke, and Leia. First of all, not having them being the major characters in the movie was a stupid idea, and not having them meet together is a stupid idea, and not having them fight together was just it was just egregiously wrong. Okay. Um, I think that there's been too much of a push. Um. Say it. Say it. All right, all right look, look. <laughs> Say First it. First movie comes out, it's got a female lead. The second movie comes out, Rogue One, it's got a female lead. Back to the regular saga, it's got a female lead. Han Solo did, had a male lead. It had to because it's called Han Solo, but who killed the woman or who killed the villain in the end? A woman. The next movie, female lead. Um, Forces of Destiny was a female run show. And then they do something like Mandalorian which is kind of like half men, half women. And they say, well, Star Wars is for everybody. And then they do like Ahsoka, which is all women. And they'll just, they'll say, it's a woman show. This is a woman show. And then, um, and then they'll have Acolyte and say, well, that's a woman show. And then Boba Fett will have men and women. And they'll say, well, Star Wars is for everybody. Well, is it for everybody or is it a woman show? <laughs> and I don't think, and, and worst, <laughs> worst of all that they did is when Kiri Hart took over entertainment. She had the job, I think, that, that Dave Filoni has now. She created a story group to monitor and create all new stories moving forward with Star Wars. And she said publicly that she wanted this group to be all female, and which is really bad that she said that. But what's even worse is that she said it um, in public. She had no pro she had no problems with saying that that I created a, a, a group of people to run the company that are all women. Now, and, is it? Is and it, it shows in the, it shows in the movies. It shows in the movies. I mean, we don't see you know. Um, uh, uh, the, the kind of storytelling we saw in the past. This is all. It's just. It's just not good. It's. Just, it's garbage. And, There's my answer. Garbage. Okay. It's garbage. And I agree. You got it out of me. I, I knew. I knew I would because I can get it out of all the uh, Star Wars fans uh, who have eyes and brains. Uh, but Rogue One was great. I will give them that. Rogue One was great. But I do. The, for, see the Force Awakens <laughs> was good. It just copied Star Wars. Rogue One was great. Um, the Mandalorian's first two seasons were fantastic. <laughs> I know, I know, and then you know, and then Boba Fett, Boba Fett. I mean, the most sinister bounty hunter in the galaxy. Look, he's right up there. He's right up there on the wall. Uh huh. Signed by Jeremy, and uh, uh, most sinister bounty hunter in the in the world, the most dangerous bounty hunter in the world, and he's fighting for fucking water rights <laughs> and and better workplaces. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? The most Look. ruthless killer in the galaxy, and he's like, "Does everybody have enough water? Is it a safe work environment for everybody? Does everybody have a helmet, an OSHA accepted helmet?" What the? I just could not understand that. And oh um, man, oh, and Kenobi, man. Kenobi was fun. I, I I liked watching Kenobi. That had some problems too, but uh, Kenobi was all right. All right, uh, one, one one more question, and we'll we'll We're losing Francis. <laughs> She's lost. Or whatever. Uh, Who's Francis? What, what did I do to Francis? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that's JDF's assistant. Um, but you you what what's the most iconic memory you have from doing all the cons? Maybe it was someone you met before, or maybe it was a moment from you know behind the con that uh, maybe with William Shat not William Shatner, but um, 
Luke Skywalker, uh, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. M- Mark Hamill. Uh, mate, what was your best memory from Khan? From doing all the cons, covering all the Star Wars, because you're around some uh, some people that other people would die and completely fan out for. Who was the person that kind of shook you up and got you out of your character? Oh, um, I have to say, I think the most, my favorite moment at any con, and, and it's probably going to change as soon as I get off this, but I'll remember one time I, I had a painting I did of Patrick uh, Patrick Stewart as, uh, as Jean-Luc Picard, and I, I was a stage host at, at the show, and, and they let me go in beforehand and talk to him as they were like setting up the convention. And he took the he signed the the painting that I did, and then we just sat there and talked about art for like twenty minutes. And and he just saw me as a fellow artist. I mean, you know, I I I, I have a day job which is art, and then I do the conventions and stuff, which is a small part of what I do. But um, you know, the, the 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 crux of what I do is I'm an artist, and 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 he just we just spoke back and forth um, like two artists. We were talking about um, well, I won't get into it, but it was just some, some long stuff about art and and how digital art is changing the world. And so, to me, I think that that was one of the coolest. And of course, I, I have to give a second runner up to uh, interviewing with uh, David Prowse, and because um, you know Darth Vader is my favorite, and uh, and he actually passed away uh, three years ago tonight. Was uh, was when David Prowse died. He died on uh, November twenty eighth, twenty twenty, and um, so interviewing him was 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 just uh, was fantastic. I, I thought uh, I, I, I always thought the world of him. He was, he was my favorite as a kid. He's my favorite now. Uh, I think I have a Darth Vader behind me somewhere, don't I? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Any questions from the audience, guys? He's kicked. He's kicked Zach's back in. He's kicked ASJ's back in. Uh, any questions you have for probably one of the most um, decorated panelists in Star Wars history? Whoa, 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 whoa! That's a little. Uh, uh, you know, James Arnold Taylor's got me beat. If James, if James hears about this, he's gonna, he's gonna. He's going to hey, freak on me. I would just say, hey, look, this young guy didn't know any better. He didn't know me, so he he gave me your title, and he okay, he, okay, he'll, okay, he'll smooth it over. Okay. Uh, any questions for uh, Kevin? All right, Matthew, you're going to come up next. Any questions, guys? Because I think one, how often do you get someone on this channel who's been around the stars who played Star Wars? You know, it, it's rare. Very rare, and he was very open. Like, can you can you imagine getting someone at a con to say Austin St. John is going to jail? Oh no, I didn't say he's. I, I should refrain from. That. I mean, he he. It looks like he's going to prison. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, not, it's just it, it's a ninety five percent chance he's going to go to prison. It's 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 my it's my opinion. You owe money to the government. You're going to jail. Uh, if you're famous, you owe money to the government. You're going to jail twice. I. I, I, I I, I just don't see it, it working in his favor, but I don't. I don't know the the uh, the context of his uh, of what he did. I mean, I know what he did or what he's accused of, but I, I don't know the, the the particulars. And remember, his uh, there his go defense right there. here it go right there for you. You can read about it. I put up his court docs. So on June seventeenth, uh, twenty twenty, uh, Jason Lawrence Geiger, aka the Red Ranger, aka Mister Bad Boys, he got the PPP loan for approximately two hundred and twenty. Five thousand dollars for St. John Enterprises. Um, of the funds obtained, he sent twenty-two thousand to a co-conspirator or co-defendant, and he invested approximately one hundred seventy thousand with another co-defendant. And we have thirty-three thousand dollars unaccounted for. Is is the first co-defendant the twenty-two thousand? Does that person work for him? Uh, no, this was the guy who was setting up all the applications. Oh, he's going to prison. Yeah, he, he's going. He's going to prison. And he yeah, said it the, was someone else's fault. Yeah, he's going. He's going. If if if, if that's all true, uh, yeah, he's he's in big trouble. But um, his defense might have a different. Uh, a, a, <laughs> I don't a different know. Swag. So I did mean, Wesley Snipes though. Wesley Snipes tried to put it on the accountant, and look how that turned out for Wesley Snipes. He ended up uh, okay. in jail. Oh, you want you want to drop Wesley Snipes? I got a, I got two words for you. Two letters for you. <laughs> OJ. Okay. Uh well, OJ. He, you know, th- this is a little different than OJ. They got. Yeah, they but got, look at how guilty he was. You know, he got away with it. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. He was he was proven innocent. <laughs> if the glove don't fit, it must have quit, Kevin. That in my opinion, he innocent. was he was found not guilty. He was not he was not proven innocent. He was found not guilty. <laughs> Oh, look, man, I could probably talk to Kevin uh, all day, guys. Let me let me go back to chat. Let me see if you guys came up with any questions. Uh, I feel terrible if they don't. 
Um, I don't know, well, man. While you're looking at the questions, too, I do have to say, you know, uh, Kevin was always so kind with Peter Mayhew and and would would make, you know, Peter spoke like this. He, he was an ent, right? He was he was seven foot four, but he spoke very slow. And it takes a certain kind of person to be able to host a panel and really allow somebody like that to finish and to to invite Peter to speak, because a lot of people didn't. And uh, and Kevin always made sure that Peter got to say what he had to say. And he had a lot to say. He just said it slowly. And so, uh, you know, like from the bottom of my heart, you know, here on this record, um, you know, uh, you treated Peter better than Zach ever did. And, uh, you know, he was fired for a reason. And I wish <laughs> I wish you had been there uh, in Zach's place, because I think uh, Peter and Angie would have both had a much happier career going to cons up until they died, you know? So from me, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I was holding it up earlier. Uh, Kevin had made um, uh, a, a memorial pin for Peter and it was in Brown, uh, you know, like a Chewbacca bandolier. But then when Angie Mayhew passed away, uh, she always had purple hair. So Kevin made uh, these uh, uh, purple uh, glitter pins and he didn't charge us a dime for the artwork. He facilitated the shipping and the and the production of the of the pins and stuff. Like Kevin's a real deal, and and I really value him as a friend. And so I'm thrilled that he's willing to speak out about all this that's going on. And there she go with the purple hair. Matt, yep. I, yes, thank you very much for saying that. I'll just say a quick story about Angie. I, I went to a cigar. I'm always in cigar bars, but I was in a cigar bar in Hartford uh, on on in September last year. And I, I walked in. It was this big banner that said the Queen had passed away, and it was all about the Queen, the Queen. And then my phone's ringing. I look down and it says Angie Mayhew. I just thought that was, you know, yeah, because she's she's the you know the, the Wookie Queen as we always <laughs> called her. And I just thought that was so uh, that was so interesting. Oh, there she she called me about Rhode Island Comic Con something about it. And, All right, um, but, yeah. uh, R.I.P. to the Mayhews. We have a absolutely. question uh, for both of you. If you could change one thing about con culture, what would it be? Anyone can go first. That's tough. Just I, one I, thing. I, I think I think I'd make it more accessible to poor people. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to say that better, but it's just it's so expensive. But you know, if 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 you make 150 grand a year, who cares? But it's just I I, I think it's uh um this this you know I, I when, when I see somebody who who spends like who saves up for a year to buy to buy so and so's autograph, I, I I think that's a bit. Uh, that's a bit much. I would make it more cost effective for, for those who need it. And, and and I'm a Republican and I'm saying that. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. We don't do politics. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Uh, how about like, you, uh, Matthew? <laughs> there, there are guests like uh, like Steve Bloom. Uh, and, the, and the joke, the running joke was that uh, somewhere Steve Bloom is still signing because he would be, uh, I think we were at WeebCon in Dallas, uh, which is a great show. And... Uh, it was 11 o'clock and the security kicked him out and, but he was signing for about 40 bucks and other, and, and Steve Bloom's huge. I mean, he's, he's Cowboy Bebop, Star Wars Rebel. Like, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Like, I think he's a world record holder. Uh, him and Jennifer Hale have like the most male and female voices of anybody. And uh, you know, he kept his price accessible so that he can meet as many people as he could. And that's, that's very rare. Um, man, Kevin, Kevin had a great one there. I, I would say, uh, I would love to see the talent remember that uh, uh, all these fans are human beings and they have feelings. And, uh, you know, when if, if if you don't look interested when somebody walks up, if you're over it and you can't wait to go home, you know, you might, you know, never meet your heroes kind of a thing. And, and so, um, you know, whether they act like Brent Pham or they act like any of us, uh, you know, treat them with civility and and, uh, and 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 show them grace, even if they're hyper, you know, whatever, um, because they're still people. So, uh, you know, treat them like you want to be treated yourself. All right. Kindness well and less expensive. That's what me and Matt think. <laughs> Kindness. All right. Well said. Which fellas. sounds like you can find it at Fayetteville Comic Con <laughs> in North Carolina. Uh, great. Fayetteville Comic Con. I'm going to be there. Great callback. All right, I'm going to drop Kevin. We appreciate Kevin coming up. We appreciate oh! <laughs> We appreciate Kevin sharing his story, but I know Matthew has something he wants to share with Brent. Kevin, you can come on anytime though. 
anytime you want to plug something you want to uh maybe w- when austin's trial is concluded we will uh <laughs> we will have a we i would definitely go live with that all right so now shout out to kevin for one he survived um zach mcginnis he shared his stories and uh, now we have matthew egan who has uh gotten nose candy for uh the top talent at cons he he, he that wasn't up. me it, he it was something i watched zach do it was not something i did whoa 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 so who got the nose candy? everyone's like zach. he got cocaine for buffy the vampire slayer that's not what i said well, uh, look a lot of people appreciate kevin um, because my, my audience is, is typically, you know, all over the place, all over the place, but you had a message you wanted to get to Brent. If I'm not mistaken, I almost want you to send him a link so I can talk to him face to face here, but I'm not going to, he'd enjoy uh, that. Brent, um, if you want to hit the link, go ahead. <laughs> so, so I got a phone call last night from Daniel Logan. Okay. And as you guys remember from the, the, uh, stream yesterday, I don't even know what day it is. That's how much of a mess this whole thing has been. Um, and Brent went and confronted Matthew Wood's assistants and uh, confronted uh, Daniel Logan. Uh, now, the most recent thing that we did with Daniel Logan, uh, to tell you the kind of man that he is, is that uh, we sent a bunch of boxes of toys, Star Wars toys, and uh, uh, Ian McDermott, who plays the Emperor, Anthony Daniels, who plays C-3PO, and Daniel Logan, they took those toys door-to-door at the Children's Hospital, trying to make sure that those kids that are just stuck there uh, waiting for news. Uh, they, they hand delivered those toys. They signed things for the kids. Uh, you know, Daniel Logan's a great dude. And so, uh, he called me last night. He called, he talked to Laurel and then he talked to me and he said, you know, who the hell is this Brent guy trying to catch me in this gotcha moment. Okay. And, uh-huh. uh, and it, it really gave me a lot of perspective about this whole thing. And, um, I'm a, I'm, I'm a type a, I'm an extrovert. I'm a, I'm a broadcaster. You and I, you know, I think, I think we became friends really quickly because we're kind of cut. Like we see opportunities and we want to talk about boom, it. Right. Boom, boom. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but a lot of these people, they want to just do their thing and not uh, make a big political statement, not choose a side, not talk about what countries fighting, who, you know, whatever they, they want to just focus on, you know, feeding their families and doing what they're doing. And uh, so Brent goes up and, and, and tries to catch Daniel Logan in a, in a, you know, in a moment. And I'll tell you, uh, Daniel hasn't worked with Zach in a long time. And uh, a lot of the people that I talked to, I talked to two other Star Wars actors, uh, both involved in the original trilogy era. And they said, one of them told me they hadn't worked with Zach in three years since uh, Kevin Lyle was going to be uh, hosting the panel. And so that they, Zach threw a fit and stopped booking the guy but leaves him on his website. So he's still out there marketing with his name, but he yes. hasn't used the guy in ages, right? And so, uh, you know, we talked, but so, you know, everybody last night was saying that all these guys have uh, a publicist, an assistant, a social media team. Like, no, that's not that's not how this works for <laughs> all these guys. Like, you know, they're, it's a job, right? And and they, everybody thinks that every actor is a millionaire and they're getting $50,000 royalty checks or whatever. Like I've seen royalty checks for less than a dollar. Oh yeah. yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. So, you know, but everybody has it in their head that, it, that, that people are this certain way. And uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to call it, but then look at this, like for Mark Austin, Galactic Productions presents making it look like they're exclusive. Right. And then this is their banner. Like this is the banner that Zach puts behind them at a show. And he puts like the whole bottom has his email address and then his logo galactic productions presents. I don't know of any other agency that tries to like plaster their name. Like that is so fucking tacky. It's a way to recruit. I called, I called Zach tacky. It was at nine 29, 27 PM. He's definitely record straight for the lawyers. Zach, you know how it is. Uh, can't wait for your next cease and desist. Uh, but, you know, like, how tacky is that? These people are not exclusive, but he makes these banners because he knows that some of them will take them to other shows, even if uh-huh. they're booked with different agents. And it's the only banner they have sometimes. So, like, he's trying to just slide his branding in. And and there's people on here who told me, like, they haven't worked with the guy in years. So So when Brent is out there trying to catch somebody and say, hey, you're on this list. <laughs> Daniel Logan told me point blank last night 
that he asked Zach to remove him and Zach hasn't done it. If you, if you refresh this page and you go down to the L's, he's at the end of the L's, but, um, and I got a, I got a text tonight from, uh, my industry insider. Uh, and it, it said, uh, Zach doesn't understand that taking the tab off the homepage doesn't make that page disappear. <laughs> he doesn't because he doesn't uh, realize that we still have access to this. You know, there he is right there. Yeah, so, right there. <laughs> uh, you know, Daniel told me that he doesn't book with Zach because he was hearing how Zach was treating Peter. He was hearing the stuff that he was saying. And so he didn't book with him. But Zach brought him. And this is the pristine thing. Uh, it was not a pristine agency that Brent was talking about. I got so many messages. This Brent guy does not know what he like. Like Brent, you are not an investigative journalist, man, because you got the details way confused. It's pristine auctions. Mm -hmm. and this happened in the last year or two. Um, they did a a, a thing where uh, I think they sent the stuff to Daniel, or he went somewhere and signed the stuff, and and that was it was Zach that that brought him that opportunity. But he doesn't travel with Zach because he doesn't want to be seen with the guy. Like, but he took that one deal, and I guess that was enough for Zach to put him on his website. And Galactic Productions presents and all this shit, and putting Zach's email address all over his stuff. Why do you? Why does your logo need to be on the thing twice? Like, uh, come on. I'm not in the industry. I, I I'm. Not, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No. So. Jesus. So Brent, uh, maybe tone it down a bit when you at these cons. I mean, I've been with him. He does ask the gotcha questions, but you know, he also spins a lot too. So they, I, I get it. I get they, it. And, they probably uh, give him a pass. He's probably going to go down that list one person at a time asking, you know, knocking on their door and saying, <laughs> Hey, he's to back to his. and you know, uh, but like, look, look, so go back to your, go back to the banners. So go up one, right. Bruce Logan film. So Bruce Logan's own social media stuff is smaller than all this BS marketing for Zach. Like this is your client. This is, this is what I saw happen so many times. Zach cares about Zach and he does it. And this is like, so we talked about this before. He will try to book his big name guest. And then he tries to tack on as many smaller guests as he can. And he won't tell the big guest that he's holding them hostage. And that they're not getting the offer because he's trying to pile in with all of his other guests, right? Uh, yeah, because he gets on, more money. This is <laughs> yeah. another thing that he's going to sue me for. Okay, he gets more money. Yep, money. Yep, and that was at nine thirty-one. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it was. Uh, and anybody that sues me is an idiot because I work for a charity. I, I don't make a lot of money. I get to do a lot of cool things, but like you know, yeah. <laughs> charity video creator guy is not a beacon of wealth. Let me tell you. Um, yeah. But I look forward to spending his legal bills uh, for him to find that out. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think this is actually, this may be the end of the, the Zach McGinnis saga, barring that he doesn't put out another statement. I mean, I, I don't foresee him putting out a statement because what would, what would be there for him to say? Uh, he would say how awesome Chanzo's shirt was yesterday. <laughs> oh, That's snap. Tommy Bunch. Like, uh, where's that photo, Henry? Uh, you got to jump back to <laughs> speaking, speaking of Chanzo's shirt, uh, Chanzo did supply me with the, uh, oh, uh, with the, whatchamacallit, with the link. Um, let me, uh, for all those who want to <clears throat> go buy one. Look, I don't have any affiliation with this website. I don't know about it. Chanzo's girlfriend, the love of his life, uh, must have got it for him. Um, so you have love that. Love of my life. Yep. But there you go, right there. That's the website for Chanzo. There you go. Um, but I think looking shirt. it, it no, was. I, I think I think Zach survives to live another day. Um, I was informed that uh, there is one guest that uh, is keeping him afloat. And so the big question is, if he loses that guest, uh, it's over. Like, like you know, that that's where the majority is it of the, the uh, voice actor from Pokemon. It is not. Okay. Um. Uh. There's a few different. Are you? Which one are you talking? I, I don't get me in trouble. I don't want to say. Not a voice actor. From Pokemon. <laughs> oh, okay, it was cool. a voice actor, but uh, it was not a voice actor from Pokemon. I'm gonna get angry texts here any minute from is the it, uh, industry. <clears throat> is it Johnny Young Bosch? It is not. I don't think Johnny. 
Yeah. I think this year they did something together, but I don't think um, I think Johnny works with somebody else. Um, OK. And, and Walter hasn't worked with Zach for a while. Karen hadn't. I think it's like it, it's one of those like reset the clock kind of moments because they won't work with Zach, but maybe they're having a slow period and Zach offers them something and they were available. So they take it. And, you know, this is all before Zach. Like Zach was always <sighs> toxic. <laughs> <laughs> but not radioactive, right? And so I think like now that his reputation has gotten to the point, I have never seen in the history of Comic Cons a convention post that they will not book people even on their guest list. That is a first. Like, good job, Zach. You know, like, like, like really uh, 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 setting the bar as low as you can. I think the bar is on the floor at this point uh, to say that just being on the roster. Um, can I get a ruling from chat? I don't know if that belongs on the list or not. I don't know. If yeah, uh, that, that, I, that does qualify as my personal opinion. Those are safe. Uh, I'm going to put it down here just in case. That was uh, 934. I am getting somewhat of some breaking news per se that uh, Mark Dotson. I don't know if you know Mark Dotson. I do know Mark Dotson well. He's a great dude. That's the he, voice of Salacious Crumb. He's also the voice of all the gremlins. What? <laughs> all that kind of stuff right mark dodson uh, recently posted and said thank you keith i was once represented by ztm um oh. and witnessed many of his deplorable actions i fired him nearly three years ago and since that he has slandered me finally the world knows his true colors that is uh i was there and zach absolutely slandered him uh, uh zach did things to mark that uh you know are, are in the same neighborhood of the things that did it for, to me. And that was, it was really hard for me um, because it's a man to another man. I think like we're, we're supposed to be the tough guy. And uh, everybody was asking me, you know, um, you know, so he and this guy that he hooked up with on Grinder, they, uh, <laughs> oh they surrounded me in their tidy whities And I had Zach on one. I don't remember who was in front, who was in back, whatever, but it was like, they like, they like gave me this bear hug thing in their underwear. And I, I worked for the guy. I, I, you know, I was, I was there working for the show for Lexcon at the time. And then when I climb into bed, uh, my toes touch this wet condom and, and I don't remember who I was talking to today, but they're like, it was used. It was absolutely they, they, like, uh... they didn't waste a condom for the prank. Right. So, uh, in my heart, I tell myself it wasn't a used condom, but if a man had done that to a woman, you know, Kevin, Kevin brought this up. It was like, if you and I, had wrapped ourselves around somebody in our underwear that's sexual assault oh 100 percent. But I, I just like it you was brushed it off awful but i i had never called it like you know like that's a such a triggering word um we're supposed to be tough guys we're you know whatever but um you know i didn't even know this other guy he had literally just met him on grinder and i can't you know i'm, I'm not going to consent to being touched like but they were drunk and they were laughing and the whole you know but this this is great i love seeing him come out and I, I think a lot of the actors, they don't want to come out because because they like so. So you are posting this right now because Mark said it. Right. And so it's it has a life of its own now. Oh, it's going to grow. It's forever. It, exactly. th these videos are forever. So absolutely. You, you Googled uh, Zach Taylor McGinnis, one of my videos, someone else's videos. They're going to pop up. Oh, Their tweets are going to pop about up. that. So and they're going to come up as the video result too. That's forever. hundred percent. And Oh my God, Zach, so, if you're watching this and we know you are as an SEO, change your name. Uh, he'll, he'll because, have to change his uh, name, change Zach the company. Never go away. He, he, if he goes by Zach McGinnis, Zach Taylor McGinnis, Zachary Taylor McGinnis, Zachary McGinnis. A Facebook account. That's I think Taylor McGinnis. It, and uh, I had to block that one because he was using that one. I don't know, like to check after I'd blocked him. So fun fact, when he posted his apology, I had gone in and under every page that I'm an admin on and I put an angry react and he blocked them. But then I unblocked him and he hadn't blocked me because I blocked him. So I think he couldn't <laughs> see me to block me. But then I was able to laugh react and get in there and just get that laugh. Okay, Love so my that'll life. go up under here. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> the laugh reacted. I said that at 938. All right, cool. Just, just keeping notes for my attorney uh, that I can't afford. Uh, oh, you know, it's man. all, it's all good. All right. Well, we're going to kick my ass. With this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, it's great. I, and I, I am truly happy that people are speaking out against it because what I run into with my channel, 
when injustices are done and people are, are wrong, so many people are scared to speak up. Literally, nah, they'll give me, like, I got people's interviews, like, I'll speak up, but you have to cover my face and distort my voice. And I'm like, oh, man, you not, you not, you don't know how long that's going to take me editing, but okay, I'll do it. And that's the only way I can get them to speak up. Yeah, yeah. So for you to show your face, for uh, Kevin, for uh, Keith, uh, Francis, everyone to speak up. Oh, that's, I mean, that's the... That's for dust. That's for dust. That's what's asking for. The battery's dead. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Oh, I need, I need Shout out to my man dust. Me up. Um, and who is this Laurel Lampton? Is this the love of Laurel's your life? Laurel's my love of my life. Okay. Uh, uh, Laurel, <laughs> All right. Love of my life. Just, I cannot. The, uh, we, she and I spend every minute of every day together. We work together. She, we, you know, she's learning how to edit film. She's learning, you know, she's a camera operator now and stuff like that. Uh, work work uh, wife or amazing human being i do not deserve her at all is this like a work wife or candidate for real wife or what, what it, is it's this? my girlfriend and my so she's the logistics ah, director yeah. he's mixing a little business with pleasure okay yeah that brother jackie would agree with that yeah. <laughs> all right i was wondering like laurel lampton laurel Lam you know i know pretty much all you know 100 of my normal people so when i see these new names i'm like okay okay well, any last words, Matthew, before we get out of here? Because I got I to gotta edit so many clips. I got to chop all this stuff up. To I have a whole brick of, of shorts <laughs> on your chat. It was like, it's like 12 <laughs> shorts that have my face on it. I hope I hope I didn't say as much tonight to wind up with another 12. Like, Well, it's all AI. All it's, it's all AI. I take the video. As long as it's under three hours, I put it in AI and it spit out like 20. It spit out like 20 shorts for you. But I think I only used about 12. That one was 7,000 views, though, about my ex-wife. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, I wouldn't have let that. Like, everyone in the comments, no one has the context. They only well, watch the short. Here's the oh, thing, man. right? I link all the shorts back to your okay. original uh, video. So if Nobody they want more context. No, they're not. They're just, they're they're digesting this the This is the internet, sir. So, the like, the way YouTube works, I have my shorts audience who only watch my shorts. I have my live stream audience that only watch my live streams. And I have my VOD audience that only watch VODs. And then it, it breaks that down into my Power Rangers people, my Twitch people, my XQC people, and then you got the people who just going to support me no matter what. Right. And if you are watching this and you have not hit that subscribe button on YouTube, oh, yeah. he is so close to 30,000. Yeah. All Thank right. But live in the damn dream. So close. <laughs> Thank to you. Smash it 2023 style. You're running out of time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Please, guys. I'm, I'm trying to get the 30,000. You can like the stream, too. I'm horrible at announcing this because it just be messing up the flow sometimes. I'll be like. No, oh, he's dude, cooking. My sleep. And he's if this cooking. is your first time joining us, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> Ring that bell so you never miss an episode. Yeah, uh, and my editor, he gets on me. He's like, give me some B-roll and put it, and I'll put it in. Laurel's but, asking if I took my gummy, and I don't uh -oh. see it here, so I probably did. He pro that That's what he is. He's he's on the THC, y'all. So it, when you take the gummy after you eat fattening foods, it hits you like a truck. And I had just had some... Uh, hot chocolate ice cream okay and i take delta eight delta like it's nothing illegal and yeah, it's all you can get it on a store it. shelf at your walmart or your target or from the guy behind the, the bleachers okay mm -hmm. but like if you've had ice cream before you go to bed and you take that gummy the fat in the gummy just sends it and, and i told her when she handed me she's like here before you go do this interview have your gummy and i was like what are you thinking <laughs> yeah yeah all right well i'm going to let you go matt You've been phenomenal, and he had like I don't he know has. What does that. Is it you, you have that, some, does that? Is it you? No, you have some animation because I could do that and nothing happens. You have some animation in whatever system you're using. This is an Apple Studio display, the new one. Yep, yep so I yep. think it's built into the, the webcam. Never give me props. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, thank you. You're doing an amazing job. I appreciate all the attention you're you're driving to this. Uh, it you know. Uh, I just got a text from my industry insider, Johnny Young Bosch. This is this is the most. Someone's watching live, right? <laughs> uh, yes. Oh no, constant stream. Uh, uh, it's Tracy Lynn Cruz is who Kevin's talking about. They have parted ways. Uh, personal opinion, like all these different things. Uh, but but Johnny Young Bosch has fulfilled all contracts with Zach, so uh, uh, it doesn't look like he's doing any other other contracts and stuff like that. But uh, before I go, Brent. 
be nice to people. Like, you have the ability, okay? Like, choose to be more like Henry and less like Zach. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey. From the bottom of my, y'all will probably never see me again. I don't know dick, if this bro. is the, you, like you know, the unless, uh, you know. Zach- I'm sure if this comes up, I got I to gotta go serve my Twitch audience in the next couple of streams. And then, you know, if Zach, look, I follow stories beginning to end. So if Zach makes another post, if ASJ goes to jail or is he cleared I will do another Power Rangers live stream. I've promised my audience I'll do at least one every, you know, month, month and a half. I'll keep my Austin St. John cosplay <laughs> handy. Yo, I, I got to clip nice. that for sure. I got to clip that for sure. So this will all get clipped. All of this is going to get clipped and bodied up. And uh, Zach Taylor McGinnis will get tagged, tagged the hail in it. And, you know, we wish him the best of luck, right? Nope. And I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll hop over to the, I see, I see uh, San who's saying to hop over to Twitch. I'll hop over to Twitch next time. All right. All right. Thank you are the you. best community on the internet. I adore you all, each and every one of you. See? Even Brent. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. That, 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 that was, that was uh, Matthew, guys. How's everyone feeling about today? Did I deliver? I promised to deliver. Um, freaking Keith delivered. He over delivered. He over delivered. He oversold. I think Kevin was fucking phenomenal coming up with no filter and a voice built for radio. And, you know, I think Matthew was like the icing on top, you know, or the nose candy on top. If you go to cons and you uh, rep and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, but what did you guys think? Y'all like, oh, that was that was epic. Where Brenna? He's gone, right? He's gone. Now, look, I'll drop the link, but I want someone new. I know sand will come up. Um, I know dust will come up. I want someone new to come up like simply Melissa. Where are you at? Petty ASF. She came up once. And then she was like, all right, Henry, um, I'm at my security. Maybe April can come up. April can come up and get her get back against Brent. You know, I got about 10 minutes before I need to. Henry always delivers. Hey, Blake, where, who are you, Blake? Look, guys, I'm going to let you know this. There is, you know, the person, the, you know, the, the for, forgotten son is always on my stream. <laughs> it's always on my stream. I said I wanted someone new to come up. And who do you think hit the who, who do you think hit the button, y'all? Who do you think hit the button ready for violence? <laughs> who do you think hit the button ready to choose violence? Ready to put Matthew in his goddamn place. Huh? Ready to clap back at Daniel Logan. Ready to to go in on Karen Ashley for ever thinking he was mean. Put them goddamn Brent emojis in the chat because Brent is back and he only wants violence. He got like a red filter on. He's laughing. I see some horns are starting to come out. Shit. Like, I don't know what's going on with Brent back there. Maybe he's morphing. <laughs> he's morphing. <laughs> he's morphing. <laughs> is he morphing or is my jokes just uh, we're, we're, well, I got some new sound effects. Where is it at? Uh, uh, Jesus. I don't got it. I thought I had the joke. I, I mean, I got the vine boom. I swear I had. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, I got to work in these new sound effects. But all right, we'll give Brent. How many minutes do y'all want Brent for? Five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, open floor. You know, Brent is an acquired taste, but you know, some people think he my goddamn sugar daddy and all that good stuff. I mean, I do consider him a friend, but you know, like friends, you know, we don't have to agree on everything. But how many how many minutes do you guys want Brent for? Five minutes, ten minutes, five minutes tonight. I see five. No tens, no tens. He's he's more phenomenal. <laughs> look, I don't know who Blake is, man. Blake knew. So look, if you want to figure out if someone's a troll, um, <laughs> uh, someone. Bla- if you want to figure out someone's a troll, look when they created the account. Go look at Blake 8043. See when they created their account. See how old it is. If it was created today, it's probably the Forgotten Son who is on my, he'd be on my ass. I'd be looking at like this ninja. <laughs> All right. Anyway, without further ado, Brent, how have you been? Matthew Egan came for and came for you all the way. Right. Which was surprising because I thought, uh, Everything was, but he took issue with Karen and with Karen, we built a, I've been seeing her at multiple cons supporting her and, um, love of my life. She, I, she advertised her as the outspoken sassy one who doesn't have a filter. And I'm <laughs> sure she understands 
the backlash that she got when she re- she replaced Tweet Trang and when Steve Carnitas replaced Ase John and when Johnny Young Bosch replaced Walter Jones. But it was never uh, – people didn't speak their minds. They spoke with their uh, toy sales and movie attendants, and everything went down. So she probably knows, but she's appreciative of me because I speak my truth. I don't have a filter. And <laughs> – yeah. And and those that are saying that I came around because I'm asking for her autograph at every con. And there's an understanding that despite our initial uh, rough introduction through the movie, thing um, I came around to liking her in as the character, as the Yellow Ranger. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I hate her, but that's just the unfiltered thoughts of a f- four-year-old boy who watched the movie for the first time and was taken by a surprise. And there's some context to that. I don't, it's not like I hate her. No, I, I think she's great. But I think Matthew, he doesn't know that context. And I honestly, I don't blame him. But at the same time, that's just in, in terms of Karen, that is what's going on. And, and she understood that. And I, and she, and she speaks without a filter too at a Galaxy Con. She talked about JDF and how he's a Sour Patch Kids. Sometimes he's sweet, and sometimes she wants to punch him in the face. I mean, she has that sassiness that I really like as well. Someone who doesn't have a filter. And that, in terms of Karen, I think that's what I want to say about Karen. And in terms of Daniel, I thought Daniel was great. And when you go to these cons, there's cameras everywhere. John Young Bosch knows this. So when I was recording his... uh, his uh, panel at a con, he acknowledged that, oh, you're recording me. And I'm like, yeah, every, there's a bunch of cameras recording you with a cell phone. Because when you're at a con, you have no privacy um, because you're there for the fans and you cannot expect any privacy. So any, any conversation you have, you just have to assume it's going to go public. And, okay. and Daniel Logan, that, that clip that I have was posted on his Instagram channel. It, it, it was since switch because he constantly switches the, the videos, but it was posted on his end. I actually, someone, either you or someone said that the insult was public. Zachary's insult was public. So we didn't know from these clients what their reaction is. What do, Are they okay with this behavior or not? If you're going to say, I'm like with Matthew Woods fan, are you going to say that, or Matthew Woods assistants, they, they didn't want to talk about it because it's private. That's their right. <laughs> and okay. I, 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 they have every right to say silent, but I, I'm going to assume that you are, you agree with Zachary's comments, and that's that's okay. It's a free country. <laughs> wait, but, wait, 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 wait! You're accusing, uh, you're accusing of Matthew of agreeing with Zachary's comments? No, no, no! If you're silent and you oh. don't want to speak about it, okay, then okay, we have to assume. What, what could we do? We give him the benefit of the doubt, or do we just do we? What, oh no! What, what no. I, I'm with you. I'm I, I'm with you. If you don't speak up, silence is compliance. In my and, and people like Patty and the, the, these are the same people who are saying they need to speak out, and then they're accusing me of being nosy. We're all Henry. You're nosy. You like to dig. You know. <laughs> you know. It's, it's funny. You and with Daniel, we had a great like conversation. Uh, and yeah, yeah. And yes, and he knows that everything is public. People uh, have their phones out. They're recording. You shouldn't be investigating and, too much. And um, when I mentioned Christine, I even said that I didn't even know what that was. And I, I, don't, I don't claim I'm an, I'm an investigative reporter, but that conversation was mostly positive because okay. um, we, I asked him, I showed him the, the post and I didn't have to ask him what, what he felt because he already told me it wasn't right. What, what that Zach said wasn't right. And we deserve, and he gets to say, uh, I don't want to talk about it, it's private. That's his right too. But as I, as I told him, people are going to take notes. And they're going to say, this guy's silent, which is his right. But what assumptions are, are they going to have about him? You know, I don't know, because the thing is, not too many people know who Zachary Taylor McGinnis is. And let alone, you have to type in a certain specific thing. You can't just go to a website and pick, pick up this picture. He says you have to email him for the client list. Um, so I don't think too many people are going to ask no, him you about the post. The, like, I can go on uh, Galactic Production, look up clients. This will show, this will pop up. Nope, he removed the, he removed the tab. You have to go to the you have to type in the specific page directly. 
Oh, yeah, tap, tap. okay, now, now he removed it. Yeah, because I go to Galactic Production, I click Clients, and uh, let me see, he might still be up here. You click Clients? Uh, yeah, I go to Galactic, Google Galactic Productions, click Clients. No and way he has a client. He might be gone. No way he has he has no, a client list. No way he put a client list back up. No way. This this yeah, could, see, uh I'm looking at it right now. Let's yeah, he's still up here. Really? You go to Galactic oh. Yeah. Hold on, guys. We I gotta confirm this. All look, here here when I when I go to his page, all I see is home and content. Gal type in Google Galactic Productions and then click clients. Uh, oh, 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 Go shit, you're right, I see, I see, <laughs> I see, I see, yeah, 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 you, you're absolutely right, Brent is right, guys, it may not be on the page, the website, but if you just go to, if you search Galactic Productions and you go to client, it still pops up, so he needs to update this page, and he probably won't, because it, it'll look bare, it'll look bare, but Brent, Brent's right, uh, he, he still has the client page on the main page of Google. You can see, oh, you can see the schedule too. Um, let me just share this for, uh-oh, uh I bet you that's Matthew. I bet you it's Matthew. Who, who, who do you think hit the link? Oh, uh, Santa's like, nah, 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 I got to get in. She's like, she like, I know you said you didn't want me to come up, Henry, but I'm going to come up anyway. All right, so we'll bring up Sand in a second. Um, here is the schedule. So um, this is what, uh, ASJ, I mean, not ASJ. Uh, Zachary Taylor McGinnis has booked. He's booked through March. So Hacksaw Jim Dugan, Kieran Young, Tim Rowe, Celeste Rumcore, uh, Dirk Benedict. I don't know none of these people. So, but anyway, any last words, Brent? Because we got saying who wants to come. Well, up. People think that I'm being too rough or too nosy. You shouldn't be. Look, I'm not a fan much. of Jason David Frank. I'm. That's. <laughs> abundantly clear <laughs> but i find what that guy zachary said absolutely horrible mm -hmm. and and we need to find out who which of these clients are condoned that bs behavior from zach and and if people don't like if if don't like me going up to people and saying do you agree with this statement from your agent if, if people think that's too rough or that's nosy or i need to mind my own business and you're gonna tell me it's privacy okay that's your right but for me, I need to know, and I won't support you if you support that nonsense behavior from Zachary. And <laughs> I, and you, you know, Matt might come out and say it's you, you, you shouldn't post what your private conversations. These con, it's it's you don't. There's no pr privacy when you interact with, a, especially when you're paying them. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, people, so people that's, can be that's here who don't opinion. like JDF. Like, if people think I'm too rough. If I, it, but people out here would say if I was rough with ASJ and demanded his answer, people would be clapping here. Look. So <laughs> if, if, if I do it to Daniel Logan, I wasn't even that rough. He even he told me that what Zachary did wasn't right. So in the future, I might if I see Daniel Logan at a con, I I I might come by and support him. Okay, because he took you know. And, <laughs> and so, and, and people might think that's rough, and but you know what? Again, the 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 insult, the what Zach said was public, so we need to know what these people what they think publicly, and if they want to say private, um, we can we make our own assumptions about what they think. Certain things have to be so, kept private, and people might <laughs> just because you like someone, you might like Tom Kenny or even Veronica Taylor. My favorite, she is my favorite. And I, if I were to see her, I would do this. I would ask her the same thing. Do you agree with your, what your, what your agent is doing? And I, I would be shocked if she said, uh, I need privacy because that, that would shock me, but she's not off limits and okay. none of these clients are. So, all right. And people well, might say, oh, you, so if I'm more like Zach, because I asked the, the, the tough question, then I, I guess <laughs> he, whatever, he, you know? he, he did the Michael Jordan shoulder shrug. All right. Thank you, Brent, for standing on All right, thank uh, you. not liking JDF. We appreciate it. All right. So he doesn't like JDF. He's made that known. We all have known it. it it's fine. Uh, I don't want to echo chamber here of all JDF fans. You know, he's respectful. Um, but, you know, someone who's even more respectful is who's always standing on business as they talk to their daughters who like probably like, mom, what are you doing? 
She's like, well, it's Henry Stream, guys. It's Henry Stream. It's Henry Stream, all right? We, I got to talk to Henry before before we go to bed. She's like, one second. Let me get my daughters together, guys. One second. One second. They so like, put the pillow up. Get out of here. Get out of here. We're live. We're live. Jesus. Get out the shot. Get out the shot, girls. You knew this was happening. All right. All right. We're clear. We're ready. Let's go. All right. Got to talk. All right. Now. First off, fuck Brent. You know, you know, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm so sorry. I had to kick him out, Henry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I told him. To I, I told him I was live. You know, the daughters are back there peeking like, Mom, who, who's this Henry guy? I'm telling Dad. I am telling Dad right now. I promise. If you don't really give me good. some money for the mall or maybe some Roblox... Or get me some tickets to this uh, Taylor Swift concert. I'm telling Dad. I'm pro I'm telling Dad. I'm telling. Forget that. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, Blue eyes, white dragon. I summon you. <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. You've activated my trap card. <laughs> and maybe a new phone. <laughs> I want that that titanium iPhone, Mom. Like you've been talking to Henry a lot. You you've yeah. been. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. You're giggling. You're showing teeth. You're blushing. You can't keep your composure. I'm telling Dad. Unless no, I'm you give laughing. Me the iPhone. I'm laughing because my daughter's like, Mom, I have to put the pill on my face. <laughs> oh my goodness. She, she does not want to be online in that sense. Hey, so it she, is crazy out like, here. I I didn't even tell her. I was like, it's okay. They don't want you on there anyway. And it's like, no, mom, I do not want to be online. <laughs> I know. Hey, bro, I'll pull a blue eyes, white dragon in the quickness. With yeah. The quickness. I used to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> growing up. So I know all about yeah. Seto Kaiba and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. And they're actually, funny enough, they're interested in this because they're into all of that. Into all of um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, you know, all of that me. stuff. I wish voice I actors. Yeah, so they should, you should take them to a con so they can meet the, the voice of the people who are like, you know, blue eyes, white dragon, you know, all that shit. All that they, good stuff. They have the, the, the theory. It's like, no, nah, we're just going to watch it. We're not going to go. My deck is probably stronger than theirs. I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Probably. I'll battle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Sam, what would you like to add to tonight's conversation? We had I, Matthew up. We had... Yeah. Uh, Kevin Neal up, who was just fucking uncut. He was like, it he, was, was, yeah. he was the he was, was the stuff good. that the Beth Buffy the Vampire people were sniffing, uncut, yeah. not stepped on. He was like, nah, yeah. who, 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 who like fan work? What the fuck is that? Who the fuck yeah. are these guys? I was like, all right, man. <laughs> and that's a lot of stuff that we didn't know. Like, unless you're really in the community, you have just like, what the hell is this? I've never heard of this before. Right, right, right. And so those interviews were amazing. We learned a lot. And it also shows where the community is on that side. Not, not the fans, but the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to say something, and it's to Brent. <laughs> oh, hey, like, hey, that's um, like, Henry, great show, but I need to talk about the last five minutes of the three-hour show and, that um, you did. <laughs> and it's just, it's something that, um, because I, we all get Brent. He gets very passionate about his stuff. <laughs> Um, but maybe your approach to people is a little abrasive and that's what they're talking about. You know, I mean, that's you what know, the a shout out yeah. to Brent, but he knows how yeah. to, I was with Brent at a con. He knows yeah. how to get answers out of people. It, it's yeah. very easy. You walk up to them and you say, I got money yeah. and, the, uh, and, and then, they'll, then they'll talk to you. Yeah. The thing is, is obviously, but, you know, you know when you have the luxury of having someone from the industry who's telling you, it's like, hey, maybe back it up a little bit. You might want to mm -hmm. listen. I mean, <laughs> and that's I can, all. <laughs> I can give you Brent's secret it. sauce, right? <clears throat> here's yeah. there's how Brent do it. And I'm not exposing him. I'm just going off what I observed. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter was pissed off. He was like, look, look, look. I know how we're going to get Walter to talk to you. I'm like, how, man? He's thinking I'm talking shit or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. I'm about to go down there. I'm going to get yeah. two signatures from him and he going to talk. <laughs> yeah. And that shit worked. So Brent has yeah. the system figured out. He knows how to. And we got about like a good five, 10 minutes. I mean, it wasn't really no yeah. line there. And yeah. he talked and, you know, he's not coming on my show anytime soon. If that's what no. you guys are. Uh, no, um, he's, he's not. Um, uh, you know. But I think that if he, um, 
like I said, he he's he's right in one aspect that you know a lot of them they they don't want to talk about it um, because they're scared and <laughs> um, because they're convinced that they're going to get blackballed or yes. they're going to be you I'll, know if all this, we talk about this and then we're going to get in trouble with these people. Right. Um, I'll, I'll defend Brent in the last two minutes. Remind me to defend Brent. Yeah. <clears throat> And you know, and I like Brent. You know, he he's has an grown interesting. On you. He's grown on everybody. He, he's grown. He, 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 like you said, he's that cousin that at Thanksgiving he's done all of this stuff. It's like, what he did? What? Where did he? Who did he meet? Um, he's that cousin. Um, and you know, you still love him, and you still invite him. He's you know, family. He's to, part of the Brazilian yeah. Army. He's been here from he day is. one, guys. Whether he you, is, and like, I respect like a him. lot of what Brent says. <clears throat> you know, so please don't think that I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, like we do not agree on JDF. That I think is the <laughs> biggest one that you know we're never going to agree on that. And I'll talk um, about that too. I'll talk about that yeah. too. Um. So you know, I think that with Brent, with as at least with the chat with the, our community, he um. He takes it personally um, mm -hmm. a lot of the time with us. And sometimes we're joking around and sometimes we're like, hey, ouch, that that kind of hurt. You know, that's, mm -hmm. you know, just letting you know that that really hurt our feelings <laughs> and not in a fun way. Like, oh, you know, facts over feelings. It's like, no, that really hurt. <laughs> right, um, right. So just maybe, you know, just learn to read the room a little bit. You know, oh, a yeah, yeah. I, I, he could probably do that better. He could probably yeah. do that better. So, you know, that's it. And, right. you know, as for all the other stuff, I'm really glad that something's happening. You know, it might not be right now. It might not be, oh, Zach's like destroyed, but it's something slow. is it's happening. Slow. It's yeah. slow. And it's slow. I hope it's an example to other people in the same line of work who it's like, hey, Number one, you're not untouchable. You know, um, Anyone and the can people get that, you, yeah, and the people that you're hurting, um, they they have more power over your job because if all the fans say no, we're not going anymore, that's it. It's it's game over. Yeah, it's game over, and we're in a time. It's not the '90s where you had to make a petition and on paper and mail it in. You know, we have social media. In in a day, somebody's whole life can be destroyed or you know built back up. It's so I, I think for anybody in the business who thinks I'm gonna take advantage of everybody, this is a lesson. You can't. You okay. know, even if you think you can't. All right. You know, be touched. Thank you so much, San. Always elegant. Thank she you. puts that nice touch. The kid, the girls can come back out now. Tell them to come on. I know they're hiding in the kitchen. All right, let me get San up out of here. Let me let me clear the deck. I see the answer 06 back there. Let me clear the deck of some of these guests in the back. I'm gonna bring up the answer 06 because this guy, um, you know, he's like the silent supporter. He he sponsored a couple streams. Uh, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Francis, put some clothes on, please. We have to go through this every time. Every time. Every time. She's always flashing me back straight. All right. Answer 06. Hang tight. Or or how you know, let's oh no, answer 06 left. What's going on? Oh, okay. He's doing some ASJ cosplay. Can we can you pull that back out for the ASJ cosplay? Francis, I got you. Give me two minutes with answer 06. Hey Henry, I just sent you a message on IG. I got blocked on Instagram and on Facebook because he knows the truth hurts. <laughs> oh shit! Get comfortable with these. Get really oh. comfortable. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Get comfortable. The oh, truth hurts. Oh, all right. Answer 06. Salute to you. That's my guy, y'all. Y'all don't know me and Answer 06. We talk all the time. Salute to you, man. Peace. Have a good night. Good, good right. stream tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I talk to a lot of these people regularly. You'd be like, you only talk to Dust because he donate. I was like, nah, man. 
All right, Frances has finally fully closed. She got her lips poking out. Her things is thinking. I know people is starving. Yeah, brother's starving. Yes, sir. Uh, I know Petty ASF wants to slide up in Frances if given the opportunity. I have a shirt. Like, all you can see is what are you talking about? <laughs> You're like, oh, I got a shirt. I got a shirt. I have a, I have a sh- good shirt on. Yeah, I mean, shirt. last time you had on like some, what was that? A like a, a tank top. She was like, the tank top was tanking. I was like, well, I'm, was... I'm doing, I'm doing serious business today. Uh oh, talking got? serious business today. You got a, you got a client over there. What's going on? I no no. I actually wanted to say something really quick before they bring my son. Um, something that Keith said, right? And and Keith that was, was going met- in. Did you yes. catch it when he and called out ASJ for raising prices? I was like, I was, I was like, what? The, why don't I have you know, that loaded? And, and you know what's great about Keith actually doing this is that he is someone that isn't like me that I'm pro JDF, right? It's it's not like people are like, oh well, you say this about Austin because you're pro JDF. Um, you know, Brent. People were like, oh no, Brent says this because he hates JDF. <laughs> like he's just neutral right so it has a, at least more weight right so what keith doesn't gain anything from speaking ill of austin or like gain or lose anything right right now something that then kevin said like he was let me say something god if damn austin kevin was like John, uh, asj <laughs> jason guy whatever his name is he got cooked tonight. And I know he's watching and I'm I hope I he's, he's watching. watching. I hope Zach is watching and I hope other members like Walter, I don't even want to mention Walter so I don't summon Brent, but you know everyone, I hope that everyone a lot of people watch or at least people close to them watched and heard everything, right? And I'm sure they're sick of hearing from me. I'm blocked. Answer, I'm blocked everywhere. everywhere. Zach blocked me. Austin blocked me. Ironically, Austin, I'm not blocked, blocked on anyone's stuff. I've always... So, I've heard through the grapevine, right? That Zach has Austin's social media. So, most of the people that he's blocking is probably just Zach. Not only ASJ's team, right? But... Um, I've always been blocked. I've been blocked from ASJ at least. Um, not on Facebook, but Instagram since since I beginning of time. But something that he, Kevin said, right? He said, you know, Zach can't come back from this, but Austin can if he redeems himself. I disagree. Ooh, and talk about and it. I disagree because if enough of us voice our displeasure on his actions, right? It, I hope that at some point people will wake up. Will wake up because I don't care if that if Zach put a male copa. I don't care about Austin's bullshit post. They're <laughs> complicit. They're oh, complicit, shit. right? They're yeah. complicit, one hundred percent. Um, like I said, if. Austin would have came, listen, he's my friend. I'm going to stick beside him. Um, he, But he's wrong, and I, I called him out on it. I would have respected that, or at least mm, given him a little leeway. But then someone today who Ninja watches your channel, um, who happens to be your favorite. No, Pink Spandex, of, get on his goddamn channel, girl. Why are you blowing up my spot? Oh, sorry. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, reminded me of things that happened in the past, right? And that, um, we've all, even people that are neutral, right? Neutral to, to everyone, um, have encountered. And Austin hasn't been the best person to take accountability and to represent his fans. And what I mean by that is, complicit with Zach right now, complicit with Zach right now, complicit when his team bashed Jason with the red and the new green and had their little private, um, you know, private groups bashing Jason and myself, which, you know, a lot of people were not aware, right? Um, But, you know, they also, he also didn't 
to do anything when his staff members, his social media team, made racist remarks. And he swept it under the rug. And no one called him out on it. No one went out, went after him like, hey, like, you have racist people on your team that have said things like, you know, women of color, Muslim women, uh, monkeys with, with rags. God damn, um, you don't got to repeat that shit, but... <laughs> but I'm talk- but that's how severe. This uh, What I'm saying is that they've done severe things just as much as Zach has, and he has been complicit. Also, I won't forget about the fact that he, you know, went off about uh, Kaep- Kaepernick, the one that they wouldn't bend. Oh, I don't. I don't uh, know. Colin Kaepernick, the yeah, yeah wouldn't yeah, yeah. bend for the. He said it's uh, disrespectful to not, uh, you know, stand up or stand up for the national anthem, but you never supported why he was not standing up for the anthem. So you, it's okay for you to take the money of people of color or minorities, at, but yet you don't, you don't tell your staff to not insult your fans. Yeah. Just like he, they don't stop, he didn't stop his fans from bashing Jason. No, and, he, in fact, I've never seen him say anything remotely good about Jason or support ever. him. Ever. And then, so, so then when the whole PPP thing came <laughs> out, Jason took the high road when, bad boys, if bad I'm boys, honest, I am the petty as hell. Right, I just don't show it to y'all, but I am the pettiest person you ever find. I would have been like, mm, karma came a knocking, right? Just like the FBI came knocking <laughs> on your door, so they they brought karma because you, you know, he celebrated when people went after Jason for saying that thing about the guy that killed the roommate. I don't remember his name. Uh, Medina. Medina. When Steve Jason Medina. denounced Medina, and the only reason Jason denounced Medina is because Jason was like, as a martial artist. You're supposed to control yourself to the point that you don't use so much force to to kill someone. And, you know, Jason, then I believe he wanted to help Medina. That's not what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, he reveled, Austin reveled in that, in Mm -hmm. that Jason got that heat. When Jason got heat about Morphin Madness, he reveled in it. So then who is the person that's complicit? And just like Zach is being held accountable for his actions, so should ASJ well, for well. his team and his if if my if I'm on your your channel and I say something messed up and you don't say nothing Henry you're being complicit with what oh, I said right 100 percent so then if you're if you I represent you like the same thing with Jason Jason when when things got heated right that you saw in the email that he's like just stop arguing with these women stop arguing with Jason um, Austin's team he he checked me. He was I like, never saw it. that email, but you just slipped up. No. I, oh, no. I did slip up. <laughs> I got her. I hey, look, when you, when you an investigator, right, up. and you interrogating people, up. you just let them cook. So now that you I let the cat up. out the bag, Francis, and I've known Francis for damn near a year, and I've known that, hey, you've never showed me that. So I just, well, go ahead. Now that you slip, just go ahead and just bleh, just finish it up. Well, so what happened I, in the I, emails? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I slipped up because it's part of the argument with, oh, I don't know what's going on, with Walter. Walter who? And Jason. Walter. Uh, voice, the voice, Walter Manny Jones. The voicemail? The voice note? The voice, the, vo- okay. the recording. Go ahead, the elaborate, recording, please. Okay, in the recording between Walter and, and Jason that I'm not, that I haven't released and I won't release, he checks me in front of Walter and says, you know, I told Francis to stop this back and forth with Austin's team because I'm sick of the back and forth with the red and new green and all that. Jason just wanted it done, you know, and he would get upset and I would get upset. We all would get upset, right? So, um, you know, he was kind of like, just stop it. Like, let them say what they want. You know, these people will call me cow and put all this stuff and told people that I was a cow, that I was ghetto, that I was... Um, uneducated. When I I'm a I am a Columbia University grad. There's no way I'm not educated because you don't like me. You want to tell people that I'm uneducated. But when Get you your money me, up, not your funny. When up. you ran down Southworth 
social media and you needed translations in Spanish, I was I was smart as hell, right? Get him. So all that, Jason was just kind of, he checked me. He's like, stop, don't do it. Stop talking. Like, don't, if, if you hear it, if people tell you, if you see it, just ignore it. I don't want to know. So he even told Walter, like, he basically took accountability for me, for my mistakes. And that's what you're supposed to do as a boss, correct? As a boss, I'm, I'm the manager of my, of my job. If my staff messes up, I take accountability because mm -hmm. I messed up. They're, they're, they represent me. So if you're letting your staff, Zach, your social media team, all these people run amok and do and do evil things, right? And then to top it off, in Let Zach's apology, the person that runs Austin social media, who is who has said the racist remarks, is supporting Zach. Hold on. Like, yes, supporting um, Zach. Telling him, oh, I knew you you didn't have, I knew that this was an error and, you know, you're a sweet, I don't know, I don't remember. What's her name? name? Starts with an S. Susan? A very name. Susan, Nancy, Patrice, Linda. Susan. Susan. Okay, and he turned off comments. So you're saying Susan is a racist? Is that the allegation you're making? I'm not making an allegation. She made racist remarks. It's, it might still be out there. Oh, and it went it went viral on Twitter. You dig, bro? You Everyone like was dig. on him. And what did they do? They did the same thing. Now they started blocking people that addressed him about their their racist remark. The, and it's gonna happen if we don't if we shut up. If this is the last stream and people don't stand up like Keith did, like Kevin is doing, how Matthew is doing, myself, I've been getting threats and all that. And people, you know, trying to hack into my Facebook and hack into my Instagram, like. And and it could be the prodigal son, but it could also be other people at this point. But what I'm saying is, if we prodigal stay quiet, son. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If we stay quiet, and because we're afraid of what's gonna happen, we will. It, it's gonna eat at you, right? It's gonna eat at you for not speaking up, for not talking, for not standing up for whether that you know my deceased friend, whether it's sticking up for my race, sticking up for my people, sticking up for other people, for the fans, for the Power Ranger fans. So, yeah, I think that he could redeem himself, but then he needs to redeem a lot. I think Austin I found what you're talking about. Uh, you said, hey, uh, this was 2015. What do you think about what <clears throat> Susan said, Mata Matasi said about JDF, and uh, would you believe she used to be JDF's agent? Unfortunately, you put it behind some passes stuff on Facebook. So I can't access it. I did? Oh. Yeah, it's like I oh, got to get... Twitter, 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 Twitter. Yeah, it's like you got to get this, get the app to unlock this page. I'm like, come on, man. Oh, I don't I'm know. Like, hey, yo, what the fuck? I don't fuck? even use Twitter. <laughs> I, to be honest, I use Twitter when people start dinging me like, oh, see this is this. And that's the problem. And people want to sweep it under the rug. What did they do? That person changed their social media, laid low. Instead of, you know putting their name when they, because they would post on his, uh, under him, under his Facebook, but they would put like Karen or whatever their name is, right? Mm -hmm. They started doing Team Austin because they wouldn't want people to know that they were still on his team. And then with time, people forgot about it and it was swept under the rug. Ooh, so And you that's think what they're waiting. So Zach's actions are swept under the rug and they could be continuous Continually, continually doing these messed up things to the fandom because it's gonna, that's what they're waiting for. Zach is gonna lay low until people forget about it. Which I, I'm gonna post about it every Sunday. Every Sunday, I'm like, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Zach posted this. Three weeks ago, I'm gonna be petty as hell because it's always being swept under the rug, and that's well, not right. If we keep, if we let things outrageous things happen and not say anything. They're going to keep going. Well, They're going to keep going. I do not foresee this being swept under the rug. Well, it's well, too many. Pe too many people have posted about it. So when Zach goes to get a new client and someone Googles his name, everything is going to come up. Everything. Let's pray. Let's pray. But that's my little two cents. It was a great stream. I was doing my hair, so I didn't want to come online. But then I remembered.
<laughs> the past that happened. And, you know, it's it's not, it's a repeated thing. You know what I mean? It's a repeated thing. You know, they, they're constantly doing that. And, and Austin is, as a leader, should check his people. He won't. He's not a leader. Of course he, he, not. See, here's but the thing. What does with, that say? Here's the thing with Zach. And, 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 and I'll, I'll leave it at this. What Zach suffers from is him playing a leader on TV. In his brain, he thinks he's a leader in the real world. No different from someone, you know, the actor who plays House thinking he's a doctor in real life. He, he didn't lost touch with reality. So he may be a leader of, you know, the people who say, you know, the Red Ranger could do no wrong and they'll happily run through a brick wall. But most people are not looking for Austin St. John to lead them. I mean, leaders take accountability. PPP shit, he blames someone else. Uh, Zach said he wished JDF was dead. Oh, well, let's just give him a second chance. People, y'all make mistakes. Um, when I think of a leader, I think of people like Keith. Leaders speak up. And Keith spoke up and he spoke loud. And his words will be echoed. And I'll make sure that does get clipped and make sure everyone sees what Keith did. Because that's leadership right there. That's leadership. And he doesn't care. Like, Keith didn't, like, coming up as a con convention owner and saying these things and saying, we don't care, we don't want any of his staff, he could have the, the, the clients, he could have the biggest person and we won't want him. It speaks volume on his integrity, on his morals, on the show. You know, I would want to be part of that. People, as a fan, yeah. I would be like, I want to support that. I want to support if, Keith. If people are hush, hush, or conventions are deleting negative comments on a post of of their announcement of Austin, mm, that leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. Oh yeah, they're complicit. And uh, Answer 06 said, hey, he got blocked. And I'm sure uh, he got deleted from, I think, Pasadena Con, which, which they announced ASJ for. And he was like, hey, is Zach still representing you? Is Galactic Production still representing you? And he added them. So I'm sure that's going to stir up some stuff, but... Let's get Francis out of here. I've been hearing people popping in left and right. Salute to right. Francis for coming up with the with the clothes on. Salute to her. Oh, oh, bye guys. Look at this. Look at this. I didn't kick Brent out and he came back. I kicked Matthew out. He came back. What does Matthew want to add to the goddamn stream? <laughs> Let's go, Matthew. What? What? Do you, uh, before we do that, let me announce my uh, contributor, Eric. Thank you so much for the donation. Shout out to the chat. I didn't realize there were so many chefs up in here serving up facts. Yes. Let him cook. We had a lot of chefs up in here cooking. And we see we got a repeat chef. He's like, look, man, I got to get back. I got <laughs> I got to get back. You know, everyone wants the last word. They like, Henry, you got to stay up. I know you wake up at 5 a.m. to go to work, but we, we want to keep you up a little longer. What's going on, Matthew? What that do you got like to add? That problem to me. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> have, you seen, have you looked at Discord? So Sandy Selner said, PSA, for anyone who may be under a different impression, my booking agent is and has been Jason Kaufman since 2015. The agent who made disparaging remarks about my castmate does not, in all caps, does not rep me. He has thrown me an offer uh, once every year or two, and I'm happy to go wherever I can to meet my fans, which is the entire reason I do this. Obviously, moving forward, that will no longer be the case. Please refrain from attaching my name to post under this unfortunate incident as <laughs> I, like all of you, are deeply disappointed in this person's actions and would never condone such a thing. XOXO San. So wow. th this is this is not a name that was known to me. So this is one of the people in the suit for Alpha 5. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I am I don't know if there were multiples. Her. I know that my good friend Richard Horvitz did the voice. Uh, yes. Amazing, you know, incredibly talented voice actor. Um, but she was, but uh, our Erlim brought this up in your Discord. I, I wasn't sure if you'd seen it, yeah, yeah, but this yeah, is yeah, another yeah, person yeah. coming out and saying, uh, you know, what Zach said is deeply disappointing and, uh, you know, very disparaging remarks. And, um, you know, and going forward, they're never going to take Zach's call again. Oh. I, I'm I'm happy. Um, hopefully he upstate his client list and remove her from it. But yeah, I just checked too, and it's she's on there, um, right between the other Alpha Five and Tracy Scoggins. Uh, they, you know, so 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Jason Kaufman's going to have some words for uh, for Zach about. <laughs> on there. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. He's a good guy, so uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting uh, moving forward. Because w- what will happen is, hey, um, it's going to they if they really want to take it there, they'll send him a cease and desist and say, hey, you need to remove this person off your website. You're misrepresenting me. We don't want to be associated with you. Legally, if I got like, I think you could probably get a cease and desist drafter for like 250 bucks. Yeah. Uh, dra- it's not cheap. Yeah, it ain't cheap. It's about 250. Uh, a lawyer would just write it up and you explain it. Uh, what's going yeah. on? They'll send that stern letter expeditiously and get people off the website uh, because it's just spread misinformation. Yeah. Misinformation. But, but that thing- was all. I just want to make sure you saw it. <laughs> uh, we got it. It's in the stream. We, it's in the stream. Uh, I might have to call my editor. Damn, did he message me? Damn, he look. See, here's the thing, right? My editor, he loves editing Twitch stuff. He does not like doing the Power Ranger stuff because he's not interested. Got so, it. So uh, that's where we're at with that. All right, thank you, Matthew. Laura for was already it. saying she wanted to hire you to do editing, and here you are saying you got a guy. I hate editing. I farm it out, <laughs> and someone is telling me to farm it out to a company instead of a, I, a person. I hear you. All right, man. All right, thank you. All right, that Brent, 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 what Brent, what more could you add? He's like, well, Henry, they mentioned my name. I was about to defend you. And you like, no, I want to defend myself. Is that what you want, Brent? You want to defend yourself. You wanna you wanna respond to the hate, to the comments, to the naysayers. He wants to continue. All right, I'll give you two minutes, Brent. Two minutes. What what you got for me? Uh what Francis said about like the complicit being complicit, or if you don't say anything, being complicit. Um, I agree with her because. Um, oh, hey yo, what the? This fuck? is not the thing. Hey, I think the issue hey, people hey, have hey, with me is I'm not just uh, attacking. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can you go get the real Brent, please? Can you? Can you like? Is he hiding somewhere? <laughs> Cause he agreed no, because he agreed with Francis. Not, I don't care if people like me on this channel or not. I'm just saying <laughs> what I really believe. And if people don't like, that's fine. Let like him cook. I, but the thing what people don't like is that I'm not just talking just about ASJ. I'm talking about everyone on that list. And I think that rubs people the wrong way. You know what? I think here's the thing. That list is not accurate. As we just saw, he has a lot of people on his list that he no longer reps for. So if you were to go down that he's, list, he, he's playing on a. He's very, being very. Uh, this Zach guy's very. Um, what's a nice word to say? He's very um, like a used car salesman. Um, unscrupulous. Um, he, he, he lacks unscru- scruples. So basically, he 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 he's representing them in the past, and the client they don't bother to sever the ties forcefully, like not forcefully, but like perf- like being explicit. <laughs> so they just leave the contact open. Right. So like because they're not concerned about they're just worried about getting gigs. And if Zach, if they book with him once, they're like, oh, hey, great. I I might not use him in the, again, but um, he's always open. I mean, we're, we're not, he's not exclusive. So they probably think, oh, I use him once. Um, I, I don't have to tell him I don't want to use him anymore because I might in the future. OK, so they so, don't really. All yeah, right. I'm trying to cut you off because you only had two minutes, Brent. You you said okay. you 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 agree with Francis. We we thinking you some goddamn variant or clone, but because we're <laughs> oh, short uh, on time, we may let. Okay, me yeah, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. So I I agree with her. But if if you don't say any, if if you want to claim privacy, then people are you have to assume that they agree with those statements. That's what I have to say. <laughs> I mean, and that that just applies across the board because um, it's very easy to say a statement. Who cares if it's pub? If it's a private conversation at a con, your your thoughts are your thought. Like, and people have a right to determine whether they want to go to your booth or not based on your statements. Right. So, I mean, anything else you want to add? Thirty seconds. Um, Let's go. That's it. That's just All want right. to say that. All right, I'm about to defend Brent. <clears throat> I'm about to defend Brent, guys. You like Henry? Why the hell would you defend Brent? I'm like, oh shit. Does this look crystal clear? Like, what's going on? Like, this is way clear when I go through StreamYard. I don't know. What do you think? StreamYard full or left? I don't know. We go through OBS. Anyway, so I am about to defend Brent. I know April was like, hey, why is Brent here? 
if he doesn't like JDF? Well, because we don't want an echo chamber. And as much as, you know, I rock with uh, April, who um, her husband's selection was inspired by Kobe Bryant. If you if you get my drift, I caught her ass out on it last night. But um, no, we don't want an echo chamber. We want people who agree and disagree as long as everyone's respectful. We did have the prodigal son moonlight as someone else in the chat. And they're blocked because, you know, everyone could disagree, but no one should be insulting each other, you know, calling people stupid, you know. Uh, making fun of people's appearance. That's so uncalled for. And uh, I just don't want a community of people who support that. So the reason why we have Brent is because he's always respectful. He may say, hey, I don't like JDF. I don't like him. But he was the, you know, he'll say, I don't like him. But he'll like, man, the franchise was nothing without him. Would be nothing without him. ASJ would never be as big as the Green Ranger. Um, but I don't like him. My favorite range, ranger is Twee. And then, you know, I got my thing going on with Karen Ash. You know, shit like that. But, um, you know, Brent is cool. I mean, like I said, he's the cousin. You know, he's that rich cousin where everybody like, man, I wish I had money like I him. I got money. Fuck, man. He got a private jet. And he's just going to cons. And he's first at Wimbledon. And, you know, he's going to the U.S. Open. You know, you like people be like, is Brent selling drugs? Bad boys, bad boys. Like, is, is, Brent the, is he the supplier of ASJ? Did he get some of that PPP loan money? Nope. No, I mean, everyone is going to just have their quirks, guys. Uh, does, he not, does he not know how to read the room? Absolutely. I, I, I've been with Brent. He don't know how to read the room. But all he got to do is say, I got money. And all of a sudden, everything is, everyone, speak, everyone speaks that language. And sometimes that's, you know, that is what's afforded when you when you have that. You don't have to worry about reading the room because you got the the ultimate room reader. Um, but, you know, I, you know, I like Brent. I've hung with Brent. I've broke bread with Brent. I've uh, traveled with Brent. I've done I've spent the whole day with Brent. You know, Brent probably knows me better than most of you guys. You like Henry Howe. I'm like, well, I've talked to Brent. Uh, me and him actually align on some other things that I've never mentioned on stream. But, you know. Uh, maybe they'll come up at some point. So uh, salute to Brent, even though, you know, him and April got this uh, love of my life, this thing going on. And I saw Petty was like, she's team April, uh, Pet, uh, April. If Petty ASF is team April, you need to alert your kid's father right away because she is team April and she is trying to. She is an equal opportunist out here. She does not mind being a stepmom to your two daughters. She would she will slot right in in the role. Daughters will have two mommies, two, two, you know, two mommies and a dad. And, you know, everything would be cool. Y'all have this little poly family uh, moving forward. You know, it is what it is. But uh, today, guys, it was a great stream. Hopefully I defended Brent well. Right. You know, uh, Francis says she never felt disrespected by Brent, even though he disagreed. And Petty is laughing because she like, yeah, Henry, I would, I would slide on April. I, I would, she would pull out the pipe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't talking like no rusted pipe. Um, but anyway, guys, I think we had a great stream today. Um, it's y'all took me like 30 minutes past my goddamn end time. So it's like, I'm going to be up to like one cutting this video. I'm thinking, do I got any meetings at work tomorrow? I don't think I do. So I think we're actually pretty good. Um, but today was great. Now I have served and I've been of service to my Power Ranger Day One community. Friday, I got to get back to Twitch or some of these other stories that I got uh, lingering uh, in the background, like breaking stories, updates on things that I just kind of push to the side to um, to basically follow the story cradle to grave. And hopefully I did a good job for you guys. You guys got a little bit more information. You got to talk to some people uh, that you probably never will get to talk to on any other stream. Like I'm, I know Keith does interviews, but who 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 gonna get Keith to kick to kick uh, people's back in? And I see the goddamn. I was like, goddamn. What do you mean? Uh, my man, the the quiet storm out in Lisbon. Uh, I mean, he you know he he got to do what he got to do. Um, flying around the world, but you know, it is what it is. I think we had a great stream today, guys, a great one. Um, and one day this channel is going to blow up. You're going to be like, damn, I remember Henry. I remember when you had that laptop and that shit was lagging 
And then we lost stream a couple of times and the screen was all blurry. <laughs> you know, everyone's going to remember that. Um, but, you know, salute to Eric, to everyone who donated dust, all the sponsors, uh, Matthew for coming up, Kevin Lyle, uh, Keith Gibbs, uh, the people behind the scenes, guys. There's a lot of people behind the scenes who give me information uh, that, you know, normally don't get. I know Austin St. John is watching. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What I know. You gonna do when they come for you? I know Zach is watching. Um, but most importantly, guys, if you guys want to do me a favor outside of liking the stream, there is a person I want on this channel. And Francis slipped up and told me they be watching. They be watching my shit. And their name is No Pink Spandex. And I've told you I wanted her on the show for so long. I've used so much of her goddamn content doing this Ranger stuff. But you guys need to go blow her up. Get on her Twitter. I've, tw I've tweeted at her. I've tried to DM her. I've tried to email her. She be dodging me like a goddamn bill collector. Tell her, please come on the show. Pretty, 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 please. But I love icing on top. And shout out to Coach Gang members up in here. Man, I love when I see Coach Gang up in here. That's you. Um, that's my divorce support group, guys. <laughs> they come out and support me. Make sure I ain't about to, uh, you know, I ain't going to uh, tombstone myself. Uh, but anyway, any questions before I get out of here? I guess I got like five minutes for questions. If anyone cares, if anyone's like, yo, I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Some people be having questions. Some people be be not. Um any anything else going on in the in the Ranger community? Brent, what the hell are you doing backstage, man? Brent be just, he be he be just chilling back there. Uh, any questions, guys? If you got nothing, and I've cleared everything, is she foldable? I don't know, man. She a little older. <laughs> I ain't trying to fold, but you know, <laughs> uh, I, it's it's a professional relationship with no pink spandex. You know, um, I do want her on the show. But she don't want to, you know, she don't, she be dodging me. She be dodging me. Let me see if I can get an image of her. She be, she be hiding her face. Look, if you Google her, you won't, you won't even see her face. Yeah, this, this is what you get. No pink spandex. People don't even know what she look like. They have no idea. This is not her. <laughs> this is not her. This is not her. If she come up, she's going to be like, I'm not going to cam up here. I'm going to be like, come on, cam. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Um. Someone said, hey, uh, I mean, if you got questions for ASJ, post them in the chat, too. Uh, when do I pee? Right after the show. I pee right before and then I pee right after. Um, did I ever think I would be here? No, I never thought, you know, after I start after I finished covering the whole JDF uh, investigation, like cradle to the grave. And we kind of like I think we did that shit all the way through. Someone's like, you should make a documentary. I was like, well, maybe I should. It just takes a lot of time. Did I think I would be here? Uh, here as in like only almost 30k subs and a decent audience? Man, no. I just I just wanted to vent about divorce. <laughs> Remember, I started this channel to vent about divorce. And it just took it just took a mind of itself, you know? Uh, what else? God, did you write something to me? ASJ AJJ sweetheart. Um, Amy Jo Johnson. Oh, I would love to get her. I tried, but that shit ain't happening. I mean, people don't want to talk to me because I don't want to. I don't want fluff interviews. I want real interviews with real stories. I mean, I'll play ball. I'll play nice. If you want to plug some shit, yeah, I'll plug. Now, you know who I really want, though? ASJ. <laughs> I want ASJ. And I want, I, I still want Zach. I mean, I don't really want Zach, but ASJ. If he got the balls to show up on my show like Tammy did, that would gain an ounce of my respect. But we would have to talk about the Zach shit, which he don't want to talk about. We would have to talk about, you know... JDF shit. He don't want to talk about JDF. He want to talk about fan. Hey, forgot to sell that fan word and shit. And uh, let's, you know, come on, give me 30 bucks. And I'll be like, uh, nope. You know, shit like that. So ASJ watching fan word president. He's watching um, all this shit. A lot of people be watching. I, I can always tell. Shout out to Joe Morris. He, he been traveling and shit. He hit me up in the DMs. He think I thought I forgot about him. I know about him. Uh, it was thorough. I, I, th I thought it was too. Haven't seen anything like it since. And you never will, man. I don't think you will because no one cares. They wanted to sweep JDF's death under the rug. And I was like, uh, nope. No. Um, ASJ would have to answer our questions. You damn right. 
See, like, it's one thing for me to ask questions. When I had Tammy up here, people was asking her some questions. She, she had to answer the tough questions. Imagine, like, hey, did you have sex with your husband before he, uh... And she was like, sure did. We, we saw the Viagra in the system. She was like, yeah, we did. I think what well, they did it like that morning, that night. I was like, God damn. God damn. You know, anywho. Well, guys, it's been terrific. It's been fabulous. VODs will be coming out tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I got to get, I can't believe my editor just like stonewalled me and shit. He was like, uh, I'm like, hey, you want to edit this shit? He was like, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. <laughs> you need to edit her out. Oh my god, I ain't editing her. Hey, hey. <laughs> people be people be mad. Oh my god. I all right, all right. People is blowing me up with my DMs, guys. You guys have a blessed night. Thank you so much. Make sure you be kind to people. Don't do nothing <laughs> that I wouldn't do. And what do you guys want to leave out with? I know y'all like. We want to leave out with the fall. We want, we want the fall. We don't want anything else. Can we get the fall, please? I'm like, Jesus, more fall. I'm like, yes, fall, motherfucker. Um, but what'd you guys think of the tribute? Did y'all see it for Evergreen? I thought it was nice. I wanted to switch it up a little bit. All right, y'all want the fall? What do y'all want? JDF poem. You know, I got two of them. I miss the JDF days, man. I really do. Those were some of like the raw... Like I was going to end. I was I was really digging. You dig, bro. You like to dig. Remember, remember when Tony came up? <laughs> remember when Tony came up? He was like, you shouldn't be investigating too much. I was like, God damn. <laughs> I, I knew I was scratching at something. He was like, I was like. Certain things have to be kept private. I was like, Jesus. You don't know more than I know. He was hot. He was hot that day, too. I was like, hey, hey, we're going to get this content, though. <laughs> we got that good ass interview. He was like, Ugh. anyway. All right, guys. Um, be cool, be nice. Let's get this. Let's get the fall. I don't know how y'all like the fall. I like seatbelt way better than the fall, but you know, it's a classic. It's a classic. Fall. Well, it's been a while since I wrote. I'm sure at times everyone has moped. This ain't me. I don't want to go back to where I was. All I could do is pray and hope, shake it off. But when I do, my mind says, nope. I mean, how do I deal with this? How do I even cope? I don't want to slide, but it is a slippery slope. I'm struggling, I'm grabbing, I slip because I missed the rope. My emotions are overflowing like a waterfall. The words I speak are positive. Well, at least I think they are overall. With stress occurring regularly, it's too fast. It's a hand side. Emotions are thrown like a curveball, but how can you even breathe when the air feels like ethanol? I mean, I want to fight back my mind. I want to brawl, but when I punch, I'm on the ground. I mean, I see the takedown. I begin to sprawl, but I miss. All I can do is crawl, then I disappear, I'm gone, and it's just me staring at the ceiling wall. I mean, people can see my pain, you can see it in my eyeball. The sun would shine, but the darkness moves in, becomes a rainfall. I'm all over the place, like a human pinball. So I delay and I begin to stall. 